staff? Anyone? Hello? <laughs> We're with you, Rob. We're with you. <laughs> just, uh, just one moment, Mayor Martin. Uh, Marcy is doing some work in the background, and we're just still admitting a few participants. Thank you. Okay. Can you please let me know when you're ready? We will do that. The meeting is ready to go, Mayor Martin. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, so I would like to call uh, to order the uh, call with council meeting for June 22nd uh, at 6.30 uh, p.m. And I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on the shared traditional lands of the Coast Salish people. I will do a quick roll call. Uh, so uh, council, uh, please unmute, Councilor Baxter. <laughs> uh, I'm doing a quick roll call. Councillor Logan? Here. Thank you. Councillor Baxter? Here. Councillor Day? Here. Councillor Jensen? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi? Here. Councillor Parkinson? I'm present. Thank you. Um, so all the council is here. I am looking for uh, 2.1 uh, approval of the near term, long term, and regular council meeting agenda for June 2nd. May I have a mover and seconder, please? You can use your virtual, if you like. Yep, they're all up. So moved. Uh, are uh, they? Sorry, yep. Mayor Martin. Can I just interrupt for a second? Mayor Martin? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Uh, before you before you make a motion to adopt the agenda, there is one change. Uh, last week, there was a new minister, ministerial order that came out uh, that replaced the ministerial order allowing us to adopt a bylaw at the same meeting where it had received third reading. The new ministerial order now only allows this for financial and tax rate bylaws. So there are two items on this agenda that are subject to this new order. And I would ask that council consider adopting the agenda as amended to remove reference to adoption from the two sewer bylaws included as items 8.7 and 8.8. .8. Okay, thank you. Um, and before we continue, uh, I've not been made co-host, so I don't see anybody's hands. Um, if people are raising hands virtually, I don't see them. They're not showing up. Um, okay, so with, with that, recommend the uh, amendment from our corporate officer. Uh, may I get a motion to, uh, okay. thank you. Uh, that was Councillor Kobayashi, seconded by, uh, oops, thank you. Now I'm, everybody's hands now populating. Thank you, Councillor Day as seconded. Uh um, actually, I want to propose an amendment uh, to the um, near, I think it's the near term end up. So it would now be the appropriate time or after the adoption of this agenda? I will look to staff. I don't know. Uh, I will look to uh, Mr. Earl. Uh, thank you, Worship. Now, we were seeking a motion uh, that the near and long-term agenda be received, that the regular agenda be adopted, but if Council is desirous to make an amendment to either the near or long-term, now is the time. Okay. So, uh, can thank you. There, there are two issues that I'm a little worried about. Uh, the first is, um, sorry, just let me get my papers in order again. Too many papers. Uh, I'm sure it's in here. It's God, nothing is lining up for me. I apologize for taking extra time here. Um, 15. 15. 
right. Okay, there we go. On page 18, uh, on the uh, items of business scheduled to the agenda at the top of the page, August 24th, uh, staff report on geotechnical development approval overview. And it's the only thing on that agenda so far. And the September 8th Committee of the Whole has uh, no items on that agenda yet. So I was just wondering if it's possible since all of us are probably having somewhat of a compressed summer schedule due to COVID changing everyone's plans if we could potentially move that to the September 8th Committee of the Whole instead of the August 24th Committee of the Whole. So is that with the, is, is that with the update Councillor Day that, that then we would not have an August 24th meeting? Is that the idea? Uh, we wouldn't need to have an August 24th Committee of the Whole unless it was required for some other agenda item. Okay. I will, uh, I will, um, before I look for a seconder, I will just look for a, uh, look to staff if uh, um, they anticipate there, there would be other things that would be landing on the committee of the full meeting for the 24th. Uh, thank you, Mayor Martin. This is silly, misspeaking. I, under, I understand from the uh, staff who are on title on that, that moving the August meeting will cause variances to be delayed. And the applicants are in the initial stages and are tentatively targeting the August date. We could certainly wait until we got closer and look at that as an option if, if that uh, suits council's needs. Okay, sure. Uh, Mr. Earl, uh, who wish to comment? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I was going to make a similar comment. Staff have no concern with uh, the deferral of the item that's currently on the 24th and with respect to geotechnical development approval. That said, um, if council was desirous to remove that meeting from the schedule, if you could let us know this evening, that way we wouldn't further populate it as items come up. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I do have a motion um, from Councillor Day. Do I have a seconder on that? So clear hands. Just looking for a seconder. I do not have a seconder, Councillor Day. Okay, so thank you. I'll move on then to my other item um, in the minutes uh, from um, June 8th. Uh, there was a presentation by the representative of Olympic View um, stating you, that. Sorry, we're thank still on the I don't think we're at the minutes yet. Yeah, so Correct. this. Yeah, so but you're. It's, it's, yeah. Thank you. Uh, hold on, everybody. So, Councillor Day, you are still addressing the near-term agenda item, correct? And you were correct. just as a okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I could not. Uh, so the representative uh, explained that um, the uh, preliminary layout approval had expired, and he mentioned that we had uh, sixty days. Uh, that the applicants have applied for zoning, but uh, I don't find it on either the near term or the longer term agenda. Maybe I missed it, uh, but I was just trying to draw our attention to that maybe we had missed something on our near term or longer term agenda. And this is, uh, uh, I will look to Mr. Moeller. Uh, thank you very much. The applicant for Olympic View um, is not quite in that 60 day consideration window. However, we are working to obtain it and it has no factor of the considerations for zoning, which is not before you or the subdivision as it's playing out completely staff. So there's nothing missed on the near or short term or long term agenda for Olympic View at the present. I'm sorry. So uh, you're telling us that the applicant's representative was incorrect in the minutes, stating that uh, they had 60 days. I would never like to say that Mr. Alexander, sorry, through the chair, I would never like to say that Mr. Alexander is incorrect, um, but the application had for final consideration hasn't been received or had not been received at that time. And it's not a matter of council consideration 
regardless about that time frame, it's a matter of legislative law. And we've since communicated with the applicant on what he would need to commence that 60 day window of application. He's aware and um, there's nothing for council to consider in that regard. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I, um, I believe I had a mover and I had a mover which was Councillor Kobayashi. I was looking for a seconder um, to the near term, long term and regular council meeting agenda. Can I have a seconder to that? Oh, thank you, I've got hands. Uh, Councillor Jensen has seconded that. I will call the question. Any in opposition, please raise your virtual hand. Seeing none, uh, that motion passes and we move forward. Uh, three, public participation. Uh, it is my understanding we do not have anyone who wishes to speak uh, to council this evening. Uh, however, we do have five written submissions that were received and have been attached to the agenda. Um, which brings us to mayor's message. Uh, and I have just three, three things. I will uh, attempt to be as quick as possible because I know uh, uh, we have lots of things to do this evening. Um, first of all, our, our survey. I would like to thank um, the nearly 4,000 uh, people who responded to the Ocean Boulevard survey, survey. Excuse me. Clearly, it's a place that people value and a topic people feel very strongly about, and we will be uh, discussing that later this evening. <clears throat> Amazing engagement, though, um, in council. You might have heard me uh, say this. I, I did say it on the radio as well. You know, I, I, normally we're looking at 75 to 100 people will will get engaged. Um, on a subject uh, when we're doing surveys. So uh, 4,000 is, is spectacular. That number is, is outstanding. So uh, it shows you how invested the community is uh, around Ocean Boulevard. <clears throat> the second issue is in regards to beach food. Um, hopefully everyone did take an opportunity to go down this last weekend um, uh, and see the vendors that were, were down there. They're, um, they're, uh, I've got nothing but positive input uh, from people. People were being very respectful. Supposedly it was very busy at times down there, but people were being incredibly respectful, um, social distancing from each other. And it was a wonderful opportunity um, uh, for some community engagement, as well as it also has supported our small businesses. Uh, we are looking at doing it again next weekend. Um, and then um, we'll be evaluating what the next steps are. Finally, the last thing I wanted to um, just discuss for, for a moment is in regards to people's tax notices and what has occurred within this last tax year. Uh, when COVID struck and when COVID sort of came, one of the things that I was messaging as a mayor and was advocating for was a 0% uh, residential tax lift. Um, council uh, and, and through community of the whole worked diligently to attempt to do that. Council did pass a 0% municipal increase for 2020, which raged over all the tax classes, uh, which was residential, commercial, and uh, industry. Uh, there has been several messaging uh, going out, um, including what was included with the tax notices, and all the messaging, the messaging that was there was correct. Um, that we did have a 0% municipal tax lift. Um, however, what did happen, and I do encourage people to go to the special committee, the whole meeting uh, of April 14th, and you can watch that meeting online. Um, you can see what happened through that meeting was that uh, council or committee at that point uh, debated about if we were going to begin the commercial tax uh, reduction in 2021. There was a vote um, that was in the majority that encouraged us to move that to 2020 to actually support our local businesses uh, in this fiscal year during um, the struggles that we've had with COVID. By doing that, that, that caused us to shift um, and find the revenues from other locations. There were, there were motions made um, to try and find that money. Uh, the, there was a motion made to look at taking it out of reserves. That failed <clears throat> and uh, the committee did not bring forward uh, any other cost savings or any other opportunities that would lower um, that lift. Ultimately, what that ended up resulting in by us shifting the uh, and lowering the tax rate for the commercial uh, residents, uh, it did shift that over to uh, our residential uh, taxpayers. And basically what you're looking at is the average household uh, increase was about $40 over this last year. Um, and so it certainly was not zero. Um, it is a zero municipal lift, 
Uh, we do not have any additional revenue um, for this, this year. Um, it was just how we uh, decided as a council to disperse and, uh, and charge that. Uh, again, I would encourage anyone who has any questions to please go to the April 14th uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. It is online and you can watch uh, and see what is going on there. Uh, with that, I will move on to um, uh, 5.1, which is uh, the adoption of the regular council meeting minutes of June 8th. May I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved by Councillor Logan, seconded by Councillor Baxter. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Any in opposition? Seeing none, that motion passes. 5.2, uh, committed the whole meetings of June 1st. Uh, may I have a mover and seconder? Moved by Councillor Baxter. May I have a seconder, please? Uh, seconded by Councillor Logan. Uh, any discussion? Uh, Councillor Day? Sorry, no. Oh, sorry, I thought, okay. Uh, then I will call the question. Any in opposition? Seeing none, uh, that motion passes. Moving on to uh, 6.1, uh, uh, correspondence requiring council direction. Uh, the first is from uh, uh, Kristen Morley, who is the corporate officer for the Capital Regional District. Uh, and this is in regard to the municipal consent for the CRD bylaw number 4304, liquid waste management, core area and Western communities establishment bylaw number one, 1985, or excuse me, 1995, amendment bylaw number three, 2020. Um, there is a recommendation um, that is in your agenda and I will look for a, a motion, a, a mover, a seconder, and then we can go to discussion. Um, I am going to, Councillor Baxter, I'm going to assume you're moving um, the motion that is before us, or did you have a different motion that you wanted to move? Well, uh, yes, but there is a choice in part of the motion, so I'm moving it with consent to the bylaw. Okay, uh, Councillor Jensen, um, your hand is up. Are you sec are you comfortable with seconding that motion? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so we do have a. Um, we do have a mover and a seconder, and uh, is there any discussion? Um, Councillor Parkinson. Uh, Your Worship, as you, um, as you mingle with the CRD types downtown, could you encourage him to use the term West Shore instead of Western communities? I think it's a dated reference to uh, our part of town and prefer West Shore. I think we've, we've you know, the Chamber of Commerce has Many years ago, started the push to uh, to change that uh, that term, but otherwise, yeah. I'm in favor of the bylaw. Okay, thank you. I will. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I'm going off script a little bit, uh, but because you brought it up, Councillor Parkinson, I am going to look to you, or maybe Councillor Kobayashi, you could you uh, also have some experience with this through the chamber. Is the West Shore? Is that just an informal name? Is that an official name? Like where? I don't like I <laughs> like I, I don't know what the difference is between West Shore and Western communities other than a branding exercise. Is it just a branding exercise or is there some legal um, forms? Any uh, I, I counselor oh, okay. oh, three people have their hands, so I will go Councillor Parkinson first. I just I would just say it was it was brought in at, in the day when uh, uh, shortly I mean, several years after Callwood and Langford Incorporated. Uh, Grace Holman, who was a councillor in Colwood, sort of championed the, uh, the change to uh, to refer to West Shore as opposed to Western communities. And uh, certainly it's been, you know, it is the brand. It's the name of the Chamber of Commerce now. Um, it just, uh, well, frankly, there was a bit of a stigma associated with Western communities and West Shore was branded to try to, uh, to change and reflect the uh, growth and excitement that's happening out here. Okay, thank you. Uh, councillor Kobayashi, did you have anything to add to that? No, I, I, it's exactly my understanding of it, Mayor Martin. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Day, did you have, uh, Councillor Day and Baxter also had their hands up, so I'll just look for you guys quickly. Sure, um, just that uh, there may be a reason that the Capital Region District calls us Western Communities, maybe because that's the name of, in their bylaw. Right, yeah, thank you. So I'll, I'll, I'll check with that. Uh, Councillor Baxter? 
I just might want to remind them um, that I believe that it's ethical today to refer to people the way they wish to be referred to. And I think it's pretty clear that um, the West Shore wishes to be called the West Shore. And I think they have the right to choose their own name. Thank you. Uh, Kobayashi, you end up again. Was that? Yes, yes, I do. I just had uh, some questions if you don't. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so if you, um, so we'll thank you that, and I apologize to all, that was me taking us down a rabbit hole. So uh, we're on the main motion now uh, that was moved by Councillor Baxter, so I will go to Councillor Kobayashi. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Martin. I, I just have a, a, a couple questions and maybe staff can help with this. Uh, I was just trying to understand the formula. I, I, I looked at how they came up with the apportionment uh, um, and a, a big portion of it, of course, is based on population. And uh, of our population right now, we, according to the 2017 or 2016 census, uh, and uh, we represent 5.4% of the population of the affected uh, municipalities. Uh, but if you look at it, I, I also wanted to take into account that only 25% of our population is actually on sewage. So that takes it down to 1.3, but yet our apportionment is around, around 5%. I guess uh, my question is, um, yeah, it, it just, even if we doubled our population in, in 20 or 25 years time, it still doesn't equal what our apportionment is. So I, I find that just interesting. It's just a, a factoid. Um, and the second question I have right now, and I have to ask the question, uh, right now um, there's, with the DCC program that's being, uh, that's being uh, uh, presented, it's going to cause an uplift in the cost of a house, a new house, all the new houses, uh, when this comes into effect. Uh, I was wondering if someone actually calculated what that uplift is going to be, because you know we talk about affordable housing, and yet we're we're actually sticking this uh, DCC on the new homes. And second, and my third part of my question is the uh, operating and, and future capital cost apportionment. Um, does anyone have any idea what that uplift is going to be to our citizens and in, in, within the city? What, what are we talking about? Like that, that's the thing that we, we say these numbers and these percentages, but I don't have a firm understanding of what that is. That means to each citizen. That's my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we, I, I will look to staff first, but uh, I don't believe um, our director of finance is on. So he may be the person to answer some of those questions. Uh, but I will look to staff if there's uh, staff. Do you have answers today or should um, um, should we gather that information for Councillor Kobayashi? Uh, through the chair, Mayor Martin, I might be able to handle some of that. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, there were ser several questions there and, and Councillor Kobayashi, I, I don't have all the answers to, to it. The 5.4, that's supposed to be the gross capture of allotment over the course of build out until 2045. And so while we're not at that in any near percentage right now, which is demonstrated in part by the report brought forward by Helen at the last meeting, the same as the CRD, our projected growth by 2045 is anticipated to, to be closer to that number, but very likely you're correct. It's, it's, it's not proportionally right when you're doing the math because there's a little bit of, of extra breathing room to allow for I and I and those sort of factors that we're supposed to bring into control for the next little bit. You're also very correct that um, yes, this will be a deep development cost charge that's applied at the time of single family dwelling or multifamily dwelling site and realized at the time of subdivision or building permit. From what we understand from CRD, I think those charges will be less than $3,000 per unit, but frankly, CRD is the best person to ask because I hear your question to be direct, directly related to the, the accumulated charges of a home being constructed in Colwood. Um, it, I think the best answer to that question is it is on top of the known charges today. It is a new charge. And so even if that was $10 or 4,000, it is a charge on top of what is being collected today. It's brand new. Um, I'm trying to think there was at least four questions and that was only two answers. Uh, sorry, would you mind giving me the other two? Yeah, the apportionment of like the, the actual uh, capital and the operating costs are going to have to come out of the tax base, our tax base. 
So do you have any idea at this point in time what that uplift is going to be to the, to the average household in COVID? This was, and through the mayor, uh, or the chair, this was something that was directly asked from CRD. They are not going to know some of their actual cost of operating the plants until they tr frankly turn the switch. Now, all the municipalities and staff that I was, that were involved in that meeting, uh, at our mouths drop that no one's has, has, has run a rough number, but until they know the switch on this and uh, turn the switch on this design build, they're not going to know what their actual cost of operation are. But they all did encourage us that this is supposed to encompass that. And if there was a reduction or increase that that would come after this development cost charge levy was imposed, <coughs> that they weren't opposed to amending it in the future. But there's not a physical number that anyone can put a pin in right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Baxter. I just want to refute this idea that if you uh, increase DCCs, you increase the price of a house. Um, a house sells for what the market will bear. And there have been times certainly when houses have sold far above cost because the developer sells it at what the market will bear. 2008 gives a perfect example of what happens when houses become too expensive. So there were units uh, here in Colwood, which had been built large uh, as large um, condos, and they became very difficult to sell because the price was too high. The market's reaction is to simply build smaller condos and sell them at a price the market will bear. So you can never get more than the market will bear for a house, no matter what the cost is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, I, I think that there are important questions that we don't have the answers to at this point in time. And my experience on this file has been long where in residents who are on sewer in Colwood have complained to me about uh, the additional burdens that those sewer utilities place on each individual homeowner, including um, where uh, upgrades are made to the lines uh, based on uh, what the CRD feels is necessary for the system as a whole, but they uh, do not go back to the uh, residents who use those systems and ask for approval uh, of those upgrades. So um, the, the experience that I've had so far has been that once we have approved of a bylaw with the CRD, there is very little chance that we can uh, change the, the course for the future on that. So I would like to suggest that um, we get some better answers to these questions before we approve this bylaw. So I'd like to suggest that we table this until those answers are made available to us through the CRD. Okay, uh, I believe a tabling motion takes precedent. Is that correct uh, through my corporate officer? Uh, yes, you are correct, Mayor Martin. Uh, do I need a seconder for that? To table? That's a good question and off the top of my head, I can't give you a good answer, so I would say yes. Okay, may I look for a uh, seconder, please? You can use your virtual hands. Councillor Kobayashi has seconded that. So I will, uh, we are, there's no discussion on tabling it. My under is, uh, if I'm incorrect, please somebody stop me, but I believe there isn't. Uh, so I will call the question. Uh, so the, it, I, it's gonna be a double negative. So I want everybody to pay uh, careful attention. So the, the motion table. So I am looking for people in opposition to tabling the motion. Uh, those who wish to uh, oppose tabling the motion,
please uh, raise your virtual hands. Uh, Councillor Jensen, Councillor Baxter, Councillor Logan, and Mayor Martin oppose. Uh, the motion fails. Uh, so we'll come back to the main motion. Um, uh, Councillor Day, the table uh, is still yours if, if you have anything else. Sorry, nothing else to add. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there, I don't see any other hands, so I will call the question. Uh, so this is on the main motion uh, moved by Councillor Baxter. Those in opposition, please raise your hands. Councillor Day and Councillor Kobayashi opposed. Uh, the motion passes. Moving on to 6.2, uh, Carol Brown, Chair of the Citizens Environmental Committee, Colwood, uh, Roadside Stands and Off Street Parking Standards. Um, there, um, th this is a correspondence. Uh, Carol Brown and David Grove are from the Citizens Environmental Network are here to answer uh, and are available to answer any council questions if there are any. Uh, but I will look for a, a motion first before I go there. So, uh, Councillor Day, you have a motion? Sorry, I think my hand was just still up from before, but I'm happy to move uh, the motion as um, recommended in the agenda that correspondence be uh, received and uh, that uh, staff develop options for imp implementing their proposals. Okay, thank you. Councillor Kobayashi, your, your hand is second. Are you seconding that motion? <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillor Kobayashi. Councillor Kobayashi has seconded it. I will go back to the list though. So, uh, Councillor Day, you are first. It will be Councillor Day, then Kobayashi, then Baxter, then Parkinson. Oh, no, and Councillor Kobayashi does not wish to speak. So, Councillor Day. So just, just to motivate uh, that uh, this is something that's coming forward from our residents, uh, asking to look at options for uh, increasing the use of roadside stands. And uh, I, I think that we should look at what they're proposing and ask staff to help them craft something to come forward to council. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Parkinson. Uh, there you go. So a couple things. Um, firstly, I guess, I don't think I've, I've heard since I've been on council a desire by any particular individual for a roadside stand. Uh, so, and, uh, and secondly, on the off street parking standards where they seem to be talking about 100% uh, wiring for EVs. I think since I've been on council, I've certainly pushed for uh, EV um, parking in, in uh, multi-residential things. I don't think I'm prepared to go to 100% uh, yet. I think it's gonna take a long time before we get there. Hopefully we will, but it'll be a while. So I guess um, I'm not sure that, uh, that uh, burning a bunch of staff time on these at this time is warranted. So uh, I'll uh, happy to receive this, happy for the information, glad to see some of the work that this group is doing, but, but I don't see the point in uh, sending our staff off to do a bunch of work on these issues at present. Uh, Councillor Baxter. I'd just uh, like to um, speak in support of the motion by saying that um, apartment buildings uh, built now, condo buildings built now are uh, going to be inhabited for at least another 80 years and we will certainly be 100% electric by then if you look at all of the declarations of car manufacturers and our own governments. Um, I'd also uh, like to point out that th this council and many many others declared a climate emergency and this would seem to be a small thing to do, but a necessary thing to do to help deal with that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing no one else wishing to comment, I'm gonna call the question. Uh, those in opposition, please raise your virtual hand. Uh, Councillor Parkinson opposes, uh, the motion passes. Uh, moving on to uh, 7.1, uh, new business, uh, rezoning of the R, uh, RZ 2002 Medford at uh, VMP, Veterans Memorial Parkway. This is a recommendation from the June 1st Committee of the Whole. 
Um, may I have a mover and seconder, please? And then we can go to discussion. Moved by Councillor Logan, seconded by um, Councillor Kobayashi. I'm gonna clear hands. Is there any discussion? Uh, Councillor Kobayashi? Nope, uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. A couple of things occurred to me while uh, looking carefully at the wording of the motion. Uh, in the first uh, clause uh, on page three of our agenda, it says um, the very last clause of that clause is where a parcel is located adjacent to the Langford city center. Uh, and I was concerned that that wording could potentially impact other developments that uh, come forward in Colwood, but adjacent to Langford. Uh, and I wondered if staff um, wanted uh, a slightly different wording or some clarification there to indicate that we're only speaking about this specific parcel. Uh, Ms. Clark? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I think that's a very good question because we are planning to clarify the location of the Mayford property within the bylaw. So to direct it within the, to the west of VMP, to the south of Mayford and to the north of Langford Parkway, which is the only city of Colwood parcel located on in that portion. Uh, thank you. And I also see Mr. Moeller's uh, hand up. Mr. Moeller, do you have any, any, anything else to add to that? Uh, thank you. No, no, I don't. Great, thank you. So did I understand correctly, Ms. Clark, that you're suggesting we add some wording there? Yeah, sorry, there will be wording within the bylaw. So when the draft, when the bylaw comes first, first and second reading, it will okay. be and Okay, great. Thank you. Then I don't need to try to sort that out tonight. Um, <laughs> And I'm just also wondering um, if it's normal to receive uh, the density bonus prior to the issuance of a building permit. Uh, through the worship, I can answer that one. No, it is not normal. This is um, this was the first time we considered that for this specific case. Okay. And um, my next question is whether or not this will affect our CRD requisitions now, or if it could have an impact on our future capacity, such that additional costs may be borne by other Colwood sewer users. Uh, through the chair, the sewer capacity, Langford has agreed to an intermunicipal agreement, so it'll be flushing into the Langford side. Um, and will form part of the capacity consideration for Colwood, but not extraneous. And that's one of the reasons why council is considering the zoning increase on these lands. So the intermunicipal agreement won't affect our capacity with the CRD? Uh, through the chair, it, as by being an intermunicipal, all it means is that Langford will collect. However, it will be to Colwood flows. And so they're just the intermediary callwood flows will increase by the density that's that's uptaken by this property um, and the density consideration that's been considered by this property. So it's, it's it adds to Colwood's flows as would any other development in Colwood just after it goes through Langford. Okay. Uh, and then uh, my last question is in regards to the stormwater under point four of the motion. Uh, where it speaks to that the stormwater will not be of a material different quality. Uh, I'm just wondering if the development should contribute to improved water quality for the stormwater. So through the chair, uh, the stormwater quality compared to the area that's in now will we'll change from, from soft surface, essentially it's a landscape area to the hard surface runoff. As part of that, it will be treated in catch basins and controlled interceptors before it's discharged. What the impetus of the motion is, is that, or the intent is, is that 
Colwood Creek system is not burdened by an increase of flow from these lands, but quality of, of control from the impervious areas or the surface areas will meet all the standards of the relative bylaws, both Colwood and Langford's. Okay. And, uh, sorry, I, I also see that um, we have the, uh, the developer also online tonight um, and has indicated that he has the ability to that question as well. So I will look to Niles. Niles? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor Martin. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, yeah, no, I really appreciate the question, Councillor Day, and this uh, th this item was raised uh, at the previous meeting by, I believe it was uh, Councillor Baxter <laughs> as well, just working to understand the uh, stormwater runoff and impact that we'll have uh, as water move east under VMP towards Colwood Creek. Uh, we have uh, our, our professional uh, civil engineers uh, and as well as our biologists have, have, are, are developing a plan and it will be uh, covered within the stormwater memo that you will receive uh, prior to first reading uh, that will, will cover off both the fact that we will have no net negative uh, capacity on the Colwood Creek as we know it is uh, quite well saturated already in during peak flow season. Uh, at the same time, we'll be working out a uh, bio swale plan that will, will effectively ensure that the water going into Colwood Creek is, uh, is in a far better state than it is today as it passes under VMP. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I follow up on that? You may. Uh, so the, will there be some water quality standard to ensure that the works operate as envisioned? Um, just to, to answer that question, that that's, um, both for the engineer and the biologist, they would be monitoring and signing off on the works, um, both at the time of uh, design, but also throughout the construction of the process to ensure that there, uh, there is a positive uh, impact. Uh, and, and let's um, keep in mind as well today, I mean, this is a, this is a gravel pit with uh, a number of, of uh, you know, there's a significant amount of garbage uh, and also uh, invasive species on the property that need to be uh, need to be um, controlled and 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 cleaned up, and so that entire process plus the swales that will be designed will be uh, will be certainly signed off by the uh, qualified professionals at the time of both uh, um, during uh, planning, construction, and uh, completion. Thank you. That's it for me. Okay, thank you, Councillor Day. Uh, I'm seeing no other hands, so I will call the question. Uh, those in opposition? Seeing none, uh, the motion passes. Moving on to uh, 7.2. Uh, this is the landmark uh, development variance permit application DVP 2001 for 468 uh, Goldstream. Uh, Mr. Jim McLaren, uh, developer, uh, is here and will introduce his team and provide an overview on the request that Council made at the June 1st, 2020 Committee of the Whole meeting to provide further information regarding the implications of relocating the parkade ramps and the protection of trees boarding the property. Uh, Mr. McLaren. Hello there, can you hear me? We can. Oh, good. It's a new experience for me and thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, I would just like to uh, say thank you for allowing me to get something new into my life at my age. Uh, everything you do is makes life better for the next day. But I'd like to start, I'd like to start by uh, just explaining a little bit about the, the dairy lot first and uh, and asking if you all had the opportunity of reading the, the site plan that I, that I sent to you all about uh, on, I think it was the 15th of June, with, a, with, a, with the, uh, the uh, tree surgeon's uh, comments. Did, did, have you all had a chance to read that? If not, I'll just read it out to you tonight and, it, and we'll go through it that way. Are you still there? Yep, How, okay. however, however you'd like to do it. Okay. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will just start with the the uh, dairy lot. I just like to say that uh, I treat that as a very important part of this development. I think it's going to be significant for the municipality. 
I think it'll be good for the uh, for, for the lo locality there. And uh, I'm looking forward to making sure that we can do it all right. And I would like to work with council and and the heritage committee to make that make that uh, situation work for for everybody. And uh, our our thrust is to uh, to move it and 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 to make it right and try to make some sort of a way that we can create some sort of a an economic value to it that would uh, you might be able to might be able to start making cheese again in the in in the building. But having said that, uh, we uh, the uh, what we did with the these changes that we requested is that we were able to we were able to change the uh, the location of the of the foundation and 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 take it completely outside that lot so there would be no conflict with the uh, with our foundation and and the dairy lot as we transfer to the municipality and i think that's a that's a, an important point to recognize uh, I think what you also did with that, with the change of the of the ramp coming out there, and and uh, and just to uh, give you an up, an update on that, uh, we were ha we we previously tried to get uh, three or four three accesses out of there, but uh, the city of Langford decided in their wisdom that they didn't want any traffic going to the west, so we've had to 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 avoid some of the uh, the uh, conflict underneath in the underground. We did revise that ramp going westward to and and to take a little bit of the traffic out of the out of the underground to Goldstream Avenue with right hand traffic at that point. Uh, we have also uh, we've also by doing that we were able to reduce the the envelope of the building uh, to uh, in, in that change and uh, it, it increased the landscaping, not by much, but it did increase the, the landscaping a little bit. And we, it gave us significant more views to the development that uh, by shrinking the building down, we were able to get the view corridors into the development uh, in a, in a situated in a much better way. So the, uh, what we've done with, with respect to that and the other, the other option but it, 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 that we've done is that we, we've made a one meter buffer zone between the property line and the, and the, uh, and the, and, and the foundation wall of the, of the excavation. But, I'm, but the architect, the landscape architect and the, uh, and the uh, 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 tree, a tree, our tree, a tree management council has suggested it. It probably is not going to help the trees that are, that that are already there, and that he they are all suggesting that we we put new trees in their place to uh, to uh, to make sure they're going to live. And uh, I I can I'll, I'll just read a little later on. I'll read the, this landscape comments to uh, to. Uh, let you know what he has said about it, and I think Jim Partolo, our, our our landscape architect, he's on he's on board to speak to it. I'm not too sure if he can hear, hear me or not, but it's a, he's on board to speak to it. And uh, Frederick Miser, our architect, is there too, so he can he can make further comments on that uh, if you see fit to have that done. But on that on that plan that I did send in on that western boundary where those uh, where the trees are located adjacent to the to the historic building lot and building B, I I I I sent the plan in and, and located it A B B C C D and D to E, and the first part A B re recognizes the 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 historic building dairy lot, and there is no conflict whatsoever in trees on that that particular lot. We can make we can make whatever ever you do or whatever uh, call it wants us to do there. We can we can we can make that work. The next area goes to where the ramp area is, building B, and it goes through to building B to build to C. And in that area, there is where it takes in the the road to uh, that goes into Langford to the west there, and Langford has built a barrier at the end of that 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 road there that has uh, has told us don't trespass on this this piece of property, and I think what they did they created a lot there to make sure that it was just not going to happen. So we we made the revisions that we uh, we thought were necessary to to make the plan a little better. 
So that area that where the trees are standing, uh, coming out onto the on, onto Whitehead into into Langford, is where the barrier sits. And and uh, Mr. Talbot in his report said the 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 trees are probably damaged. The soil's been the soil's been built up against the trees, and uh, he has said that they were they should probably be removed. Moving north to the side of building. Building uh, A. Uh, that is the area where where Cal Calwood has said to us. Your staff has said to us they would like the trees removed in that area to make sure there's there's access into into the rear into the rear area in case there was ever a fire. That they wanted to be able to get their fire trucks into the back and and I think it's I think it's the right thing too. I think the uh, I think it, they should be removed, and and I think it needs uh, clear access there. God forbid, I wouldn't want to see those trees trees burned down in the back, and I'd like to take every precaution necessary that we could to make sure that that uh, we had all the protection we could to that area. In addition to that area, along, <clears throat> alongside uh, alongside uh, Building A. Uh, someone someone in the past has taken an excavator to the Langford side lot and I I don't know who it was but they lowered the they lowered the the grade and they've they've cut most of the roots on the, on the Langford side and our uh, our tree our tree management Tom Top Mr. Talbot said they're all going to die anyway so it uh, uh, to top that off with Callwood asking them to come down so they can provide the access into the rear, in the rear, in case there was a fire. I, I think I agree with it. They, sh they, sh they should come down. So that sort of that sort of says what I, uh, I wanted to say along that side. Everything we done or we have done with the changes, uh, we have tried to m make an improvement to the development, which I think we have done. We uh, we have also provided a, a, another access to stop any conflict inside our own underground by by allowing some of the traffic to, ro to move to Goldstream. And we also created a little bit more parking for this for the historic dairy house that I that I'm doing everything I can to make sure it's right. I think it's as I said earlier, it's 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 a positive thing for our development and I, I want to make sure it happens. So with, if I move now to the uh, to the eastern boundary, which there was some comment with respect to the uh, with respect to the trees on that side, uh, we moved it. We our architect moved the building wall in there one foot too, so we would get a little bit further away from from the trees. But they've all said there's no conflict at all with that with that uh, with that that side of the that side of the building. So I think we're I think we're all we're all good with that. And if I could just read the if I could just read the, so just to reinforce what the uh, what the landscape, or what Mr. Mr. Talbot uh, has said, and he, I, I requested a, him to review the site on June the uh, June the ninth, and it's uh, read really the arborist review of potential tree removal and retention along the west property boundary of 468 Goldstream Avenue. At your request, we reviewed the drawings supplied by Miser Architects Limited and Lobbard North Group as they relate to the row, row of conifer trees along the west property boundary. During our June 8, 2020 site visit, we reviewed the location of the trees and a proposal to allow one meter buffer along the boundary as a tree protection measure. It is our opinion from the information reviewed, it will not be feasible to retain any of the trees that are located between the west side of the building and the property boundary along the entire length of the building footprint, and I just I just clarify that one point: the our foundation wall doesn't go into the with the with the changes we've made, it now doesn't go into the dairy the proposed uh, his historic dairy dairy lot we're donating to Santley to call it. Even cons considering this buffer, which in our opinion would be insufficient, uh, insufficient the excavation footprint. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, are located between the west side of the building and the property boundary along the entire length of the building footprint. Even considering this buffet, buffer, buffer, 
which in our opinion would be insufficient. Uh, the excavation required would be a minimum, would be at minimum up to the trunk and root collars of all the trees. This would necessitate the re removal of all the limbs from the, from the building side of the trees for construction access, leaving an unbalanced to the tree canopies. The combined loss of 50% of the canopy and the root plate from one side of the trees would leave them vulnerable to wind throw and to their ultimate death, should any of the trees remain standing. Furthermore, we observed that the trees have been severed within one meter of the trunks for a retraining vault on the west side of the trees, and I refer to that wall for the parking, uh, that grows that, that grows across the end of Whitehead Place. Similarly, the roots are of the trees along the adjacent 2697 Whitehood Place property boundary have been severed more recently. The trees in this location will already have been have an increase in vulnerability to failure due to the root loss and would not survive or remain on uh, remain stable once the roots on the 468 Goldstream Avenue side of the trees have been severed. Therefore, due to the potential risk related to the root loss that is anticipated to accommodate the construction of the project, we do not support retaining any of the large conifers trees along the, the boundary and re recommend that they all be removed and replaced with more suitable trees species. Now that's that was his comment, and I think our landscape. He's on board here. He's going to tell you something. I'm not too sure what, but he did. He did make a comment on that, and uh, I think when you when you when you look at his comments, and we we address the fact that that over over 50 percent of of that property line uh, uh, is the, the the trees have been damaged, and and Colwood has asked that we provide an a right away to the back there that remains clear just in case something happens. I, I agree full heartedly with what they've said. Now, just relating a little bit to the uh, the height of the buildings that we what we, we, we have there, which was another- George, uh, Jim, yes? I, I, I'm gonna stop you. Yes, okay. Uh, because uh, we, we um, what I'm going to do council is uh, we, we asked, uh, specifically for the developer to come back and uh, make uh, further comments in regards to relocating the parking ramps and the protection of the trees boarding the property. I would like to address those issues first. If there's still outstanding questions in regards to those two specific things, this is the time to ask those questions. After that, I am going to look for a motion uh, coming out of the committee of the whole and then we can go to discussion and you can ask questions of the developer or of his staff um, on those specific things. But before I look to a motion, I'm specifically looking towards what committee requested, which was uh, the further information regarding the implication of relocating the parking ramps and the protection of trees boarding the property. Council uh, is, uh, I'm gonna clear Councilor Jensen's hands. On those two specific uh, uh, items, does anyone have any questions for the developer? I see Councillor Jensen's hand. Councillor Jensen. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, and this is for uh, staff or the developer. I mean, we I've never heard a developer come in and say that they're gonna do everything they can to save the stand of trees. Um, I've heard lots of reasons why trees need to come down for a range of reasons. I am looking for some independent confirmation that, uh, you know, have we done our due diligence? Is there an arborist that has gone to look at this property on our behalf as the community? Uh, and uh, that's some of the feedback I'm looking for specifically. Okay, I will look to staff. Uh, through your worship, uh, typically the city doesn't have its own independent arborist go and verify an arborist report that we get from a developer. Uh, we have an arborist report from the developer that speaks to the trees along the western property line and notes that they likely have to be removed due to impacts from construction. With respect to count, uh, committee's question about the parking ramps, 
Uh, the developer has provided an updated plan that show the, the ramps will be set back a meter. So the variance in question now, only the height item is the item that's being requested as the uh, setback variance has been nixed with their updated plans. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, or excuse me, Mr. Moeller. Uh, Richard handled that beautifully. I've got nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just as, as a follow up, though, I mean, have we taken this at face value? Have we been out to inspect the property? Uh, they're saying the roots are damaged. I mean, where, where, where are we at here? Uh, is everything that's within this report consistent with our knowledge of the property? Or are we taking it at face value? Well, I actually, I'm going to jump in. I, I, I think I think what we've already heard, Councillor Jensen, from staff is that we rely on the Arbor's report from the developer. And, um, you know, that's that's it. We don't. But I will let staff go. Councillor well, uh, question was if we agree with it, Your Worship. Well, I don't think we can disagree with it uh, because we don't have an uh, we don't have a counter expert. Um, we're, we're just depending on the independency of, uh, of the arborist. But uh, Mr. Moeller, you, you had your hand up. Yeah, I did and want to do it specifically, uh, through the chair, wanted to specifically try and um, answer Councillor Jensen's questions. One of the things that as staff we do is we look at the siting of the building, the likely impact, and then we rely on the arborist report to have measured that appropriately. Where the arborist here is saying that he but does believe that there is a strong likelihood of impact to the tree roots in the original siting and location of the building and also in the new siting and location of the building as it shifted a little bit to the west. With that knowledge, I think it's reasonable to assume that there is likely to be an impact to those roots and it might be more suitable than to leave 80 foot tall trees in a narrow buffer zone to look at them as being a potential hazard because of any potential root damage and look to bring them about with a tree that'll grow with the development and therefore be rooted properly with the development. That's how staff receive the Arbor's information and relate it to a plan and then look for what we consider to be reasonable in regards to that Arbor's report. But we would never uh, presume what the Arbor speaks to. We just look for the truth in the words, so to speak. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Parkinson. Councillor Parkinson. Thank you, Your Worship. So as I, as I understand it, We'll be removing the section that says relaxing section 2010 24.9 a call with land use bylaw to reduce a portion of the landscape screening requirements around the perimeter of CD19 area one to zero meter from one meter along the west property line for building B and east property line for building A to accommodate parking ramps. So the parking ramp question, uh, they were looking to move them, they've decided not to, so that becomes not an issue. Uh, this project has been approved by a previous council. Um, all they're asking for is another floor to go to nine stories instead of eight. Uh, I think, you know, the arborist was pretty clear the trees weren't going to survive whether the thing was on the property line or one meter back. Uh, pretty significant trees. So I think, I think uh, I'm fine with all this. My area, my concern will be uh, those trees are being removed. You know darn well that those trees, uh, I doubt, are completely on this property, certainly not their roots and stuff. Um, that's an issue that the developer will have to wrestle with the, uh, the adjacent properties. I just want, I guess my question would be to staff to make sure Colwood as a city doesn't get in the middle of this. We approve a project that impacts uh, properties in the neighboring municipality. Uh, that doesn't come back to roost on Colwood. I hope it's, uh, it's an issue for the developer to stick handle with the neighbors. Am I correct in that? If you're talking to me, yes, we'll have to, we'll have to, we'll have to stick handle that. <laughs> And through the chair, that is correct. It is a private property and a private property issue. Then, so really all they're saying is, can we go up to nine stories instead of eight? And the trees are gonna come down or the, the trees were always gonna come down. Uh, I don't have much issue with this, I'll vote in favor. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Baxter. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I've worked with Talbot McKenzie on various projects over a couple of decades. And I absolutely have faith um, that they're giving us the straight goods. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Logan. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just a quick question. Uh, when we rezoned this property initially, I didn't have any gray hair. Um, <laughs> I'm fast losing it. So uh, 
wondering if the applicant could comment on when he expects uh, shovels to be in, in the ground uh, on this project. Well, Mr. Hooker, I would I would hope that we'd be in the ground within within 30 days. I, we've got the we, I think we have the sewer all under control now. We have financing lined up for it. That's all that's all done, and uh, I'm ready to go with shovels. I I'm I I'm, I my hair's going gray. I'm not losing it. I've lost a bit of it, but I haven't lost it all yet. But I'm 85 and I'm running out of time. So <laughs> oh, I, I'm ready to go. Okay. So I hope I hope we can get to, we can get everything resolved in the next thirty days. I know the financing will be well. That's approved. So we have a, we have a thirty million dollar commitment to go with the first two buildings and 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 it shovels in the ground as fast as we can. All right. Thank you, uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Very quickly, just I hadn't caught the uh, change to the setback. So the second part of the motion on the floor, I think is unnecessary. So I'm just uh, wondering uh, if staff would like us to remove the relaxing of section 10.24.9 of the land use bylaw. Uh, through your worship, uh, yes, the second, mo second item can be removed. As well, we have uh, subject to following conditions. Condition number two can be removed and the reference to citing in condition one can be removed. Okay, thank so you. We don't actually I have- I wouldn't- Go sorry? ahead, Councilor. I'm sorry to interrupt, Just, go ahead. I, I would make that motion to remove the second portion relating to section 10.24.9 and uh, the second bullet uh, uh, under the end that subject to the following condition. And you're moving the rest. We don't have a yes. motion. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I will move the motion as amended then. Great, thank you. Uh, I will go to Councillor Logan seconds it. I'm gonna, no, Councillor Logan did not second it. Sorry, you're, you're giving me the mouth. I can't hear you, Mr. Logan. No, I'll second it. Sorry, my hand was still up from uh, when I spoke last, so, but I'll okay. second it. Yeah. Thank you. So Councillor Logan has seconded it. Uh, I'm clearing everybody's hands because Councillor Jensen just put up his hand again. Um, so we are now on the motion. Um, so I am going to allow an opportunity for one final discussion on the motion itself. Councillor Parkinson. Uh, unmute Councillor Parkinson. I pulled a Baxter, shame on me. <laughs> Just a friendly amendment, I believe that also uh, under the and that under condition one that the siting and would be removed. We're only talking about the height of the building here. The siting would be as per the uh, previous approvals. Uh, just looking at staff, staff. That is correct. Great, uh, so does that, and Councillor, Councillor Day, you're comfortable with that amendment? Great, thank you. Um, I'm not gonna call a vote on that, I think. We are, we're all good with that. Uh, I'm seeing no other person's hands up. So I'm going to call the question. Uh, those in opposition of the motion? Seeing none, the motion passes. Uh, moving on to 7.3, uh, Royal Bay, uh, excuse me, Royal Bay Latoria South Road Design Standards. This is a recommendation from the June 15th, 2020 uh, Committee of the Whole. Do do uh, may I have um, a mover? And seconder, please, and then we'll go to discussion. Uh, Councillor Logan has moved it. Councillor Kobayashi has seconded uh, the staff recommendation. I'm going to clear hands. Discussion. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi, did you have a discussion? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, Councillor Day. Sorry. Um, I'm just wondering. Uh, when I was reading through the motion, there's no deadline for the construction of the offsite stormwater works. Uh, is that necessary? Again, I, uh, we have, uh, I believe staff wise, it's uh, Aaron Knutson and Brent Muller. Uh, yes. So we'll to one of those two. So I'm sorry, the, the offsite storm works was the question, Councillor Dave? Yes. 
So the storm works in, in association with all the Royal Bay is, is, is going to progress as the land development goes. They'll, um, they've got a receiving into the storm system. And as we work through the commons area of the Royal Bay lands, it'll be dealt with at the time of subdivision. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm sure that that actually answers your question because I don't know if I've tabled it mentally correctly. Please clarify if you need it. So um, in the motion, uh, which is on page six of our agenda, uh, the second bullet says, if the stormwater management report concludes that it is necessary to construct offsite stormwater works outside the boundary of the lands as well as on site, uh, then the works are to be designed by a professional engineer in accordance with the stormwater management report as part of the engineered wetland design. So I'm just wondering if that needed um, some sort of uh, uh, detail in terms of when that would occur. Through the chair, thank you very much for the clarity there. I am looking at page six and to understand exactly what you're talking about. I do not believe that it needs extra clarity. These were what the section of that clause is, in, is intended to represent is that the works on site may need downstream improvements and those would be dealt with at the time of either subdivision or building permit and that the developer would be responsible for those improvements even if they weren't on the subject property. I believe that captures it appropriately um, and we don't need any specificity at this time. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm not, so, oh, I do. Uh, Councillor Parkinson. Sorry, am I lost here? I thought we were on 7.3 Royal Bay Latoria South Road Design Standards. We are. And page six refers to the Meaford project, doesn't it? Oh, you're you're right. I'm mixed up. Sorry. You're right. Page must have gotten okay, sorry. around here. I thought I was getting discombobulated there. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I think that, that clears clears it up. Uh, I'm not seeing hands, uh, so I am. Oh, I do see other hands. Councillor Baxter, unmute Baxter. Put a check mark by his name there, uh, Councillor Jensen. <laughs> I'd like to uh, move the recommendation. Thank you. Actually, I think we. Thank you. I think we already have a mover and seconder. Uh, so I'm just about to call the question. So uh, I'm going to clear people's hands. Um, so we are on 7.3, which is the Royal Bay South Road Design Standards. Any in opposition? And um, I'm gonna clear the hands one more time. Any, any in opposition? Seeing none, uh, the motion passes. Moving on to 7.4, this is Latoria South Park Terms of Reference. There, this is the recommendation from the June 15th uh, Committee of the Whole. May I please have a mover and seconder, please? Moved by Councillor Kobayashi, seconded by Councillor Baxter. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, I will call the question. Uh, any in opposition? Seeing none, uh, that motion passes. Moving on to 7.5, Latoria Creek stair construction, request for proposal. This is a recommendation from the June 15th committee of the whole meeting. Uh, may I have a mover and seconder, please? Uh, it is moved by Councillor Baxter, seconded by Councillor Jensen. Discussion? So, uh, Councillor Day, then Kobayashi. Thank you. I, I just want to say that uh, I think at $250,000, um, we could do better than having a set of stairs in the park. And I think at that value, we should be looking at alternatives rather than replacing the stairs. Sorry, uh, Councillor Dave, maybe you could elaborate when you say alternatives, what do you mean? Uh, well, there is opportunities to create other connecting pathways in the park such that the stairs would not be required. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just uh, want to reiterate something that uh, was discussed at Committee of the Whole and then Councillor Parkinson. Uh, 
we did we didn't get the vote on the alternative because we we voted on on this alternative but i guess what my only concern was this is the first time i've seen a project come in and it was actually less than what the budget was and then we gave the latitude uh, to staff obviously to look at improvements and go right up to the budget of 250,000 i guess what just throws me off and concerns me a lot is the very fact that uh, you know we want to use aluminum in the construction and i'm out of the aerospace world and that's the last thing i'd want to use if, uh, because uh, folks uh, aluminum rusts unless it's alclad and the alclad does come off and so i'm uh, you know maybe the uh, the treated spruce or treated uh, cedar or whatever might might be alternatives but again uh, i just wanted to re reiterate i support the project but on the other hand I, I wanted to see something, you know, we, we, got a, we got a budget, we actually uh, came up with a proposal and we put an RFP out and we, we had people come back with, with bids that were lower and, and, and it looked like it was the solution. And so I just want to clarify that uh, that's why I supported the, uh, the original budget and not the expanded budget, because I was concerned that we were looking at alternatives that were just not worthy of even looking at, not not for those extra bucks. And thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Kobayashi. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands, so I will call the question. Uh, those in opposition? Uh, Council, Councillor Day, Councillor Parkinson, Councillor Kobayashi, opposed. And I'm just waiting because it's so close. Motion, uh, motion passes. Moving on to 7.6. This is the land appraisal plan um, for uh, Ocean Boulevard. Uh, and uh, staff resources. Sorry, I'm, ju I'm just a lost here just for a moment. Just my apologies. This is, oh, excuse me, land appraisal plan um, for Ocean Boulevard. This is a recommendation from the June 8th Economic Prosperity Committee. That's why I'm confused. Um, that, yeah, so there is a recommendation. So I guess I will look to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna clear hands. I will look to a motion then we can discuss. Um, thank you. Uh, Councillor Logan has moved it. Councillor Kobayashi has seconded it. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, give me a moment. I'm just going to clear everybody's hands. Uh, any discussion? So, uh, Councillor Parkinson. Just a question. Do we own that property? Hello, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Yes, uh, it is owned as road right of way. Uh, the process to raise title involves the province due to a clause with respect to the transfer of that land, which requires it to be used as road unless the province says otherwise. Thank you. And then Mr. Moeller. Moeller, excuse me. Uh, no problem. Through the chair, the Ministry of Transportation has agreed to close the road. All parties have agreed to close the road. Mr. Bornhill is correct. It is considered the right of resumption which is with the province right now. They have contemplated it since 20, early 20, or late 2018, early 2019. Um, and we expect that to finish its consultation round inside the next three or four months, hopefully. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Parkinson, did you have another question? I, I did. I guess I just wonder um, why we're spending any time on it if it's still three or four months away uh, with whatever conditions may be put on it by the Ministry of Transportation, and the uh, um, you know it's been it's been just around the corner for about the last two years, I think. So at least uh, I, again, to me, I would say, let's be patient here. Hopefully, it will uh, revert to the city with uh, the ability to do all sorts of things on it. But right now, we're we're just guessing. We don't know what uh, what conditions may or may not come. So I I think it's too early to be doing this kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Just a suggestion that um, this be tabled until 
uh, we hear back from the province on their consultation. There's not really any point to asking our staff to uh, prepare a report regarding the potential uses when that's still unknown. So all I'm suggesting through this tabling motion is that we not ask staff to do that until the province has uh, completed their consultation. Okay, I will take that that that's a tabling motion. So I do need a seconder to that. Um, Mayor Martin, if I could just interrupt. May. Uh, can I ask that the motion be a motion to defer discussion on the item until the province has come on board a tabling motion generally implies the mo that the item of business will be raised from the table in the same meeting. So I think it's a it's a motion to defer. And I think Councillor Day is fine with that. Councillor Day? Perfectly fine. Uh, may I have a seconder to that, please? Councillor Kobayashi uh, has seconded at that. Uh, on a deferral, is there a discussion? Uh, I'm asking to our corporate officer. Am I allowed to ask for discussion or do I need to call the question like uh, a tabling motion? You can have a discussion on a, on a motion to defer. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi, did you uh, wish to make a comment? Nope. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not seeing any, uh, no, no, nobody wishes to comment. I'm gonna clear hands then. So we, this is on the deferral. Uh, those in opposition to the deferral. Councillor Baxter and Jensen uh, oppose, the motion carries. Moving on to 7.7, 7, uh, Prosperity Roundtable Meeting Series. This is a recommendation from the June 8 Economic Prosperity Meeting. Uh, the recommendation is that the first of the new uh, Prosperity Roundtable Meetings take place at noon to 1.30 uh, uh, p.m. on Tuesday, June, July 28th and continue on a quarterly basis on the last Tuesday every third month. Um, may I have a mover and seconder, please? Thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Kobayashi, seconded by Councillor Baxter. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Kobayashi, did you have discuss? No, no discussion, okay. Um, I will call the question then. All those in favor, or excuse me, uh, any opposition? Seeing none, uh, that motion passes. Moving on to 7.8. This is the draft OU for the Urban Mix Use Development Art Center. What point of order, uh, Mr. Mayor? Sure. Uh, I uh, have a probable perception of conflict with this uh, item. So I'd like to step out now until this item is done. Okay, uh, what we will do then, Councillor Baxter, is... <laughs> I guess Councillor Baxter can still listen, right? So maybe what we'll do is just have Councillor Baxter turn off his video and uh, mute. Or how uh, do, how actually, do you... the best way to proceed is for us to put um, Councillor Baxter into the waiting room. Okay. And I we agree. will bring him back in once the item is done. So we will be doing that here right away. I'll just wait until he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. So we can talk about him now. Uh, we are, so there is a recommendation. So could I please uh, have a mover and seconder and then uh, I'll look for discussion. Uh, thank you. It moved by Councillor Kobayashi. May I have a seconder please? Seconded by Councillor Logan. Uh, discussion? S uh, Councillor Parkinson. Uh, Your Worship, I haven't had a chance to uh, to talk with you since the uh, West Shore Chamber of Commerce visioning exercise, but in there, uh, I think it was um, uh, Mayor Screech from View Royal said the CRD was working on a arts plan for the region. I wonder if you've got any information that, on that. Yes, yeah, I'm happy to. to, to so I sit on that committee. Um, there is a CRD uh, arts facility. Um, uh, capacity uh, measurement. So we are looking at all the facilities that are considered regional. Uh, so the McPherson uh, Playhouse, the um, uh, Royal Theatre, etc. Would they are not looking at small theatres? So, for example, the Mary Whisper Theatre in um, Sydney is not being considered because that's considered a community uh, theatre versus a regional theatre. 
I had direct conversations with the uh, individual, uh, and I apologize, I do not, can't remember their name. They're the outside consultant that is um, facilitating this plan. And I asked specifically about this, if this was early uh, within uh, this and that should we be waiting for the results of that uh, survey before we meant to move forward. And the, the message was no, um, that, that uh, we, we should continue to move forward and that they will definitely consider this as they are, uh, as we're considering all the other facilities, but they did not see that it would be an appropriate thing to um, put it on a shelf uh, until this was done. Sorry. Um, the survey. So just, just I, I guess I'm, I, I, I'm a little confused. So you sure. said that the, the CRD process was looking at the regional facilities like Royal and McPherson, but so and, we and, for it. pardon me and the need so like yeah. the re need so would what about the langford theater would that be considered a regional one uh the langford theater would probably be considered a regional one with it being a thousand uh seats but langford has not engaged uh at all within that committee of course um and have you had a chance to talk to the other mayors to see if this was going to be a sort of a joint West Shore thing or the strictly a Colwood thing? Uh, no, no, I, did. I have not spoken to the other mayors. I'm more than happy to speak to the other mayors at, at any point. I just didn't see any, uh, uh, and I wasn't sure what resources they would be bringing to the table at this point. Um, and so uh, I was leaving that more up to the Wanda Fuca uh, Performing Arts Society to, to sort of uh, building that team. Uh, but I, I'm certainly happy to help. Uh, and if, if there was something identified that, that other um, municipalities could assist us with, I, I would be more than happy to reach out. It, at the present time, I just don't know what that would be. So hence the reason why I haven't, have not reached out to, to uh, the other mayors to this point. So, so I guess my concern, uh, Your Worship, is that, uh, and I'm sorry to hog the floor, I'm sure others want to speak. Um, you know, it, it, it's pretty easy to go to the mayors of the other communities and say, we're going to build this uh, theater. What do you think? And they all go, had a boy go for it, as opposed to going to the other mayors and saying, there's probably a need, and I think there probably is, for a West Shore facility of some kind in some location. So we all work together and all participate uh, proportionately. Um, I think as, as the way it's coming down now, uh, the concept seems to be that uh, Colwood provides some land that gets flipped for enough money to uh, subsidize this theater substantially. And I think we should be cautious about that approach. Yeah, and, and you know, thank you for bringing that up, Councillor Parkinson. I, we do have uh, Judith Pellington and Je Jeffrey Simpson on uh, this as well. And perhaps I will look to them to just comment on how they would envision uh, other municipalities working within this project. Or maybe they're not there. Yeah, um, Mr. May. Oh, there you are, yep. Go ahead, thank you. Judith. Um, and thank you, Councillor Parkinson, for the for the question. Um, like Mayor Martin, um, it's very difficult to know exactly what at this moment um, we would be asking of the other mayors. Um, they have contributed, as has Colwood, small amounts to our society consistently over the last few years. Um, and certainly, as this is being built, uh, we would have been looking forward to the other municipalities and, you know, perhaps, perhaps, for example, going to the to Highlands and saying, you know, how would you like to donate a grand piano or something like that. Um, but at this moment in time, um, this is something that um, very much benefits Colwood. So I think it would be a very difficult thing for uh, Mayor Martin to, to approach one of the other mayors and say, you know, how would you like to contribute to something that, that's benefiting the, the Colwood um, tax base so significantly? So it's, it, it feels like an, an odd ask at this moment in time. Uh, uh, Councillor Parkinson, did you have any other comments before I move on? Um, well, I, I think I think the presumption that uh, that this is a net benefit to the tax base as opposed to an expense to the community is 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 still to be borne out. Um, I'll wait to see that. Uh, but but to me, uh, it just seems to me that it's a it's a facility that 
that would benefit the region and should be um, should be a regional facility and financed accordingly. So that's my concern. Well, and, and you know, Councillor Parkinson, I guess what I will say to you is I, I, I agree 100%. And, you know, hopefully the business model that we're seeing, other than, other than the land um, that uh, we would be looking at uh, a long-term lease on, I, I have an expectation that there should not be a significant uh, taxing implication to, to our residents. Um, I certainly would not be supporting a project that had a huge uh, tax implication to, uh, to that. Um, and so it, it's a matter of 100%, I, I have spoken to at CRD, I clearly I've spoken to everybody about it because it was in the paper and, and there was discussions. Um, it would just be a matter of finding our synergies of, of how we can incorporate those people into that uh, in those jurisdictions. I, I, I believe it should be a regional asset as well. I think it will be a regional asset. I, I have every expectation that people from View Royal and, and Langford and, and other places would be coming and hopefully uh, benefiting from that if, if this project was to move forward. So um, I don't think, I, I think we're probably arguing two sides of the same coin. Uh, I'm with you that, that I'm just not sure when, uh, when the, that engagement moment occurs. If, Councilor Parkinson, you're bum muted, so I'll, I'll let you keep going. If, if, if I may, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll pass the mic to others uh, in a moment. But, uh, but, but you know, you talk about uh, Colwood providing the land, um, which would be a generous thing to do and, and maybe appropriate. But, but the financing model for this is that the land we provide would somehow be uh, be worth a lot of money to people to build uh, uh, ancillary facilities to this theater and therefore uh, fund the theater, which is to me the, the same as the value of the land. So, so when it's the value of the land is not what uh, what Collier said it was the other day. If they think they're going to somehow turn it into enough money to build a theater, that that's the value of the land today, and therefore that's the contribution that uh, it looks like the citizens of Colwood would be are being asked to be to make to this project, and that's and that. I think by their admission is, is a substantial amount of, uh, of, of substantial asset. Again, if, if and when we ever get this land in the, in the name of Colwood. So I, that's enough for me, I'll uh, pass it to others. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I guess the, the final thing that I would comment, Councillor Parkinson, I certainly don't want to get an argument or, or anything. And then this is so early within the process, but hopefully the vision of this would be that, that there would actually be tax revenue coming off of this land which would, would, would actually create a net positive for the city and not a net negative. Um, that, that's the idea. Presently, we don't collect anything off of this land. So you're absolutely right. The value of the land is, is a huge contribution on, on behalf of the, uh, of the residents of, of Colwood. Um, but the, the tax revenue that hopefully is being generated through the commercial and the residential lands that would be built beside the theater would, would offset any, um, any losses that we would see in that. Um, but that's way down the road and we, we need to look at that model and, and, and so on. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you for allowing me to weigh in. Um, I think that there's uh, a couple of things that uh, are a little bit up in the air. So I just wanted to make sure that they're noted so that as we go forward, um, uh, they can become clearer. One of the things is uh, the question, is this a regional arts center? And, uh, you know, whether you're looking at the size of the theater or the types of um, opportunities for artistic expression that it offers, uh, certainly the work that did in getting the Schickshiner report brought forward um, identifies uh, considerably well the different groups that would use an art center in Colwood and what their needs are uh, in order to use such a facility. And I think we need to know whether or not the CRD Arts uh, Committee would look at that as part of a regional uh, grouping. Uh, certainly, uh, McPherson and Royal Theatres uh, do fill some regional needs, uh, but what when I have been involved with both of those centres, um, there are relatively 
uh, difficult for uh, West Shore municipalities to participate in for numerous barriers. Um, so I, I think that we need to clearly identify um, how we fit within the region and what could go there. Um, I, what I like about the proposal is that we are not gifting the land away from Colwood, but rather uh, leasing it and uh, encouraging uh, complementary purposes that our tax paying entities to take place there. Uh, hopefully the uh, regional arts uh, group can see the benefit uh, that an operation such as this could provide, um, even in being able to provide art space uh, for uh, performances, for students, for graduating ceremonies, uh, those types of events where a smaller venue is beneficial. Um, so uh, I think that uh, the current proposal uh, bringing with it both some limitations and some benefits for Colwood may make it um, at first glance difficult for other West Shore municipalities to um, see the benefits to participating in. Uh, but if they could get involved at, at an early stage where they can identify which of their needs we could help to meet, uh, then they might be more willing to look at the situation uh, to secure their future ability to participate in the Arts Centre. Um, so uh, certainly residents from View Royal would probably find it quite easy to attend an Arts Centre in Colwood as opposed to perhaps um, other competing venues downtown. Um, so just, just um, I think what's important, and you mentioned the Mary Winspear Center uh, not being considered regional because of its size, and yet it is a regional draw. There are many events that are held there. And one of the issues that that particular art center has had over the years has been some of the foundational uh, policies that went into creating that art center uh, have put some limitations on their ability to be a host venue for conferences, etc., because they have enshrined the rights of their residents um, to do some of the activities that used to take place at the old Sancha Hall uh, have been enshrined uh, in needing to be maintained in the Mary Winspear Center. So this would be the opportunity for other West Shore municipalities to um, stake a claim per se, uh, to be able to uh, uh, have the art center meet some of their needs in their communities. I will just be blunt with people. Uh, I think one of the things we all need to understand is uh, part of the reason the CRD is doing the regional thing and, and identifying uh, regional assets is because the city of Victoria no longer wishes to pay for the McPherson and the Royal Theatre on their own. They wish to cost share throughout the region. Um, and so you, when we start looking at, and when discussions are, for example, Mary Whisper and, and theaters that are out here, uh, I think you, we need to keep that in context um, that uh, municipalities are actually looking of not supporting regionally uh, theaters because uh, individual municipalities have taken on that burden. And, um, and I think there's some benefits to that, to be honest. There's, the reason you have theaters downtown is because you're encouraging people to shop and encouraging people to use the restaurants and, and go out afterwards. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of commercial uh, advantages to having uh, the arts within your community. And, and uh, you know, it certainly is a, the case that Victoria is very much struggling. Um, I believe it's it's over a million dollars a year um, that they're struggling with between the McPherson and and, and the Royal Theatre. So it's just keep it and keep that in mind. And, and there's nothing guaranteeing. You know, I, we all we have to do is look at Victoria. Or excuse me, look at View Royal. View Royal chose not to participate in the Wanda Fuqua Library. Um, they are a member of the Downtown Library, um, and they are not a partner with us. So uh, 
Um, there's no guarantee that just if we were to look at, at doing something here that they would choose that they would want to support a West Shore Theatre versus a downtown Victoria Theatre. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Your Worship. I just want to, um, the logic here, I've got a, a bit of a logic issue here. Uh, as the chair of the Economic Prosperity Committee, we've, um, I see there's two different motions, 7.6 and 7.8. Well, 7.6 spawn was spawned from 7.8 at an actual fact so i, I want to reconnect these two uh the basic uh the issue that came up here in, in my own head and i think uh with uh councillor parkinson was is this the best bang for our buck because remember this is we're trying to look after the community look what's best for our citizens you know what is the best bang per square foot of the land that we have but the very fact that we've uh, we've decoupled them and we've just uh, made the motion to defer 7.6, then why is 7. Point, why are we discussing 7.8? Because we don't own the land for the same very same reasons. Why aren't we deferring this? Because that was the whole thing. They were coupled because we wanted to ensure is this the right thing to put there? You know, and and that was with the option study. You know, is this the best thing? The best thing for our community and so i want to recouple them again and uh, i i'm just saying that yes i mean i'm i'm very supportive of, of the initiative but on the same hand we just deferred 7.6 which was part of part of the uh of 7.8 so if we defer 7.6 i think we should be deferring 7.8 for the very same reason we don't we don't own it yet so anyways, uh, that's my input. And, uh, you know, if so, I, I make a motion to that effect then. Yeah, so yeah, so Councillor, Councillor, uh, Councillor Kobayashi has made a motion to defer. Um, I will look for a seconder um, for that, please. I am not seeing a seconder. Oh, no, wait, I am. Councillor Parkinson has seconded it. Uh, and, uh, so we are going away from the motion and we are going to the deferral motion. So discussion just on deferral. Um, I will clear hands. Is there anyone who uh, wishes to discuss deferral? Councillor Day. Thank you. Just, uh, I'm just concerned in that um, when I made the motion to defer 7.6, my reasoning was that, you know, uh, it, it didn't make a lot of sense for staff to propose options when we didn't know the outcome uh, of, of the provincial government's decision. Um, on the art center itself though, it seems to me like the proposed idea of, of using the land in this particular way uh could still come forward and i mean it's still subject to the province uh being interested in uh allowing us to use the land the way we think is best for our citizens uh but um with deferring the art center uh dialogue um uh, it that is really detrimental to to being able to flesh out that proposal and find support um, in the region uh, for such an endeavor. Um, so I, I do understand uh, Councillor Kobayashi's point that they are uh, linked, um, but I was really just trying to save staff time uh, in writing a report before we know all the variables. Um, certainly having the art center move forward um, with a, a proposal idea could still move forward, even though not everything is, is uh, nailed down yet. Um, uh, so I, I'm just feeling concerned that uh, this this kind of puts it off until um, the decision is going to be made. 
Um, and I, I really think that we should allow the residents who've uh, been shepherding this forward to continue their work um, unless, and, unless and until we hear from the province that it's not possible. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm not seeing any other hands on the deferral. So those in opposition to the deferral, please. Councillor Logan, Councillor Day and Mayor Martin oppose. Um, the motion carries. Uh, so that will take us to 7.9 then. Um, Senior Planner 85 Belmont outline summary of fees, charges and taxes. Uh, uh, um, staff, do the staff wish to comment before I look for a mover and second? Your Worship, I can give a brief summary of the report if you wish. Sure. Okay, so this briefing is to just offer, offer information um, in response to Council Resolution 2020-202, which requested the outline of summary fees, charges, and taxes, um, as well as any alterations to those fees, charges, and taxes for 85 Belmont. Um, so included within the report are various tables related to development application fees, building permit application fees, development cost charges, and school site charges, as well as a summary of uh, community amenity contributions, um, annual municipal fees, such as water and sewer, et cetera, property tax considerations as that is now, and then a summary of one-time fees and charges. Um, I am available here for questions as well as our manager of building inspections, James Nias, and our director of finance, um, Alan Thomas. Great, thank you. Um, so can I get a mover and seconder to receive the report, please? Moved by Councillor uh, Logan, second by Councillor Kobayashi. Discussion? Uh, Councillor Parkinson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, a very useful report, uh, appreciate it. A uh, couple of issues that I guess I'm still not 100% clear on. When, when we talked about DCCs, there was um, an item that said DCCs uh, can be waived for um, nonprofit housing. And I guess I'm just not sure what the mechanism is there. If that's something that's uh, mandated by the province is automatic. If it's something that's been approved uh, previously under the DCC bylaw, or if in fact it's a case by case basis and if the DCCs were to be waived, they'd have to come to council for that. I, I wonder if somebody on staff can answer that for me. Thank you through the chair. Um, so when it comes to developing cost charges in order to waive them, that must be a metric of the bylaw. So in order to consider waiving of them, we'd have to event, amend the development cost charge bylaw to permit that to happen. What can be um, waived per se is actually a property taxes. There is exemptions um, for nonprofit charitable organizations and council can consider a permissive tax exem exemption. For that to occur, a request must be made and that would be placed back in front of you. Um, Mr. Molnar may want to comment further on DCCs. Sorry, thank you, Jill, and through the chair. Um, that's correct. Um, Thank and appreciate the opportunity. There is a clause in DCC legislation that allows council to build into the DCC program automatic reductions. That is not the case as our DCC bylaw stands right now. And it would require a consideration and amendment to the bylaw to include that for any specific project moving forward. Hope that answers the questions. Yep. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So, so that's fine. I understand that. Uh, for DCCs or permissive tax exemption, that's stuff that comes to council and the council today makes a decision. Happy with that. Here's, here's the concern, and I think I have it. Uh, when we looked at the Aboriginal Housing Society, there was, a, there was sort of, uh, you know, some, some to and froing, but, but we felt that there was a tax revenue that was going to be significant and it made sense and everybody was happy with it. And then our CFO at the time, suggested in a, in a later meeting that maybe the taxes weren't gonna be what was expected. I thought he had referred to some kind of provincial legislation. Now, I'm happy to say our CFO today was working on this, trying to get to the bottom of it. 
and he's still waiting to get some information from BC assessment on how that might work. So it's just another part of the puzzle that I'd like to understand. Uh, I think that that, that 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 will come and we'll all get that information. So I don't think there's any action to be taken. It's just one minor outstanding thing that I'd like to understand so that we all knew what, what, what the impact of this was. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, so uh, council, I'm gonna count, I'm gonna go to Councillor Baxter in a moment. Um, but I just realized something when Councillor Baxter came back. Uh, I was assuming there were seven of us when I counted the vote on the last, uh, on the deferral of uh, 7.8. And in fact, there, there was only six of us. So it was a 3-3 tie, which meant the deferral actually failed. So we're gonna be coming back to 7.8 uh, after we deal with 7.9, just so that everybody knows. Uh, Councillor Baxter. Uh, on 7.9, we're still discussing. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that um, the uh, of the costs uh, to the developer shown here of the fees and uh, DC seeds and community amenity contribution, only the community amenity contribution is is not simply to cover cost to the city. So all development application fees uh, simply cover costs to the city of processing the application. Um, so I just want everybody to understand that's not a gain to the city. Uh, the law actually says we can only recover costs, we can't make a profit. Same uh, applies to building application fees. And of course the school site acquisition is, is straight in, straight out. Uh, we don't get to keep any of that money. So I just wanted to make that point. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, Jill, another good report. Thank you very much. I just have one simple question. Just on these uh, community amenity contributions, <clears throat> um, and maybe you don't know the answer to this one, but has it been a standard practice that we, we actually waive these for affordable houses? Has, has that been the practice all along? Through the chair, um, I'd have to review the last two for uh, to answer it. But I know historically it has been both yes and no. So there isn't a standard practice or policy we follow when it comes to amenity contributions and affordable housing. They're always placed at the consideration of council. Typically, there is a request to waive, and then it's at the um, at the discretion of council if they would like to waive that or not. Uh, and I'm. Uh... Mr. Brohill would like to comment as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, the last two affordable housing projects that um, I'm aware of uh, developed one by Pacifica on Souk Road and the other on um, Gulfstream Avenue both had their amenity contributions waived. So that was considered part of council's uh, partnership with those organizations on those projects. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that community amenity contributions are generally to help um, fund uh, the additional resources needed in uh, community amenities like the library or West Shore Parks and Rec, where additional population um, creates additional needs for improved spaces, library collections, etc. So um, I think it's important to remember that um, that that is the purpose, as I understand it, for our community amenities. And, it, and it, I think it's really critical that we don't forget their purpose, because those are um, serious needs in, in our community. I think everyone will agree that our lives and our recreation centers provide really important uh, venues for community interaction, knowledge, and sharing of, of uh, our culture with one another. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jensen. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this has been beaten up a fair amount, but uh, I did have a point on the uh, community amenities contribution as well. I see we flogged it, but uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, we we are partnering with this uh, builder at many levels. We would also ask that them and to wit the BC government partner with us and show some. Uh, uh, I don't think it's too much to ask as far as uh, fulfilling their obligations for the reasons that Councillor Day has suggested and many others that I can think of. Uh, the 88,500 would be uh, um, well used by the community as a whole. And I'm sure the residents would be accessing these amenities. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have a uh, motion to receive the report. I'll call the question, uh, any in opposition? Seeing none, uh, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Baxter, my apologies, but we're gonna have to put you back into the waiting room because um, I'm gonna go back to 7.8. Okay, well, I'm sorry that you didn't miss me when I was gone last time. <laughs> I'm a bit hurt, actually. Well, I just assumed you voted in favor of things. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you again soon. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, my apologies, Council. Uh, so 7.8. There was a motion um, to defer Councillor Day, Councillor Logan and Mayor Martin uh, voted um, in opposition. That meant it was a 3-3 tie um, because it wasn't seven, um, which means that motion failed. Um, we do have the main motion um, that is on the table. Um, I will allow discussion again um, on the main motion because we, we were discussion on the deferral before. Is there any other discussion before I call the question on this, on the main motion? Seeing none, I will call the question on the main motion um, of 7.8. Those in opposition? Councillor Kobayashi, Councillor Jensen, Councillor Parkinson opposed. So that motion fails as well. Um, so that just puts us in limbo. Um, so, uh, does, does council have any recommendations for motions? Councilor Kobayashi. Uh, thank you very much, Your Worship. So, you know, just quickly, I, I mean, I'm supportive of this, so don't, don't get me wrong. It, it, again, it's for the very same reasons we just, I, I, this still gets me, we're, we're using, utilizing resources, which are very limited right now because we have to get all these shovel ready projects, you know, ready. We have a lot of developments going on right now. I just don't want to make this a, a priority and uh, affect anything. It, it's gotta be, I'm, I'm in agreement that this, let's look at this, but I don't wanna see this override any other thing that we have that's a priority um that uh, affects our citizens so i uh that that's that's where my head is right now and if we even get a, a better indication that yes that this land will transfer over to us you know absolutely let's let's look at all the considerations here like let's go ahead with the uh, mou and but right now it, it's in limbo i mean there's absolutely no guarantee that this land will come back to us so i i, I just feel that that there's a there's a bit of work from what I understand to put this MOU together. So it that's what my concern is for for the very same reasons that we defer the options on the land. So that's where my head is. And uh, you know, even if we wait, you know, we get a better indication of uh, when the decision is going to be made and uh, what's the likelihood would be a great two great questions to ask right now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judith Covington has raised her hand, so I will allow her to speak once and then I will go to Councillor Day. I will look for one final motion and if we can't, then I will move on to the next agenda item. Uh, Judith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to ask Council to uh, consider allowing us to move forward with the development of the Memorandum of Understanding. Um, you're all very aware that one of the things that developers complain a lot about is the fact that delay results in costs to developers. We are not a developer with deep pockets. We are a developer with no pockets. Um, and the longer we delay, the longer we delay our ability to move forward and access grants, 
and actually make this thing a reality. And I'm looking at the potential for grants coming down the pipeline in the post-COVID era that we would very much like to access. And I don't want to miss that opportunity. Yes, I'm absolutely aware that this land does not currently um, belong as a fee simple parcel. However, um, I think you all heard staff say earlier that there is a, a great deal of um, conviction in staff that this is simply a matter of time, not a matter of whether it will come to Colwood or not. And what moving forward with the MOU would allow us to do is to hit the ground running once that land transfer has actually taken place. So I would ask councillor to council to consider that as part of their deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, uh, councillor Day. Thank you. I'm just wondering uh, if staff could uh, offer any input on um, how much time uh, they need to work with the uh, Performing Arts Society in order to uh, potentially um, draft wording for the MOU uh, such that we are continuing to develop the language that we need but not going so far ahead that uh, we're wasting our staff time. Uh, which I do know is precious. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Hi. Yes, we uh, were in conversations since the committee meeting with um, the Arts Centre group, and uh, we had planned over the summer to work on um, draft wording of the MOU. Uh, I could see us coming back to council in uh, the third or fourth quarter of this year with a draft MOU, what we expected to take more time was the development of different options and the development of pros and cons that would be associated with the different options um, that would be part of the due diligence uh, in terms of uh, options for disposing the site. Okay, so what I heard is that the options are gonna take more time to develop, but that the wording for the MOU uh, could potentially move forward over the summer uh, without negatively impacting uh, the staff workload? I'm looking for a confirmation that oh. I got that right. Uh, through the chair, yes, uh, we don't see this as being a, um, uh, a task that would uh, uh, derail other priority projects. So, um, I'm just wondering if, uh, I don't think there's any wording. Uh, in, I'm just trying to reread the motion to see if there's any wording that needed to be changed. Yeah, Councillor Day, you know, and I appreciate that you're trying to find a motion for us. And I, I think I agree with you that we, we had two motions in front of us uh, and I don't see uh, uh, anybody changing their opinions. Um, so, oh, Excuse me, I have our Chief Administrative Officer. Uh, Mr. Earl. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, administration uh, was of the belief based on Council's strategic plan uh, that some of our time would be spent this year working with the uh, Performing Arts Center Society uh, to advance the notion of this project. And as a result of the conversations uh, with the Economic Prosperity Committee, uh, we would simultaneously be building alternate uh, proposals uh, should we get to the point of a draft MOU that council would be able to compare entering into that MOU against alternate proposals for the use of the site. And so one possible uh, move forward from this point would be to reverse the decision on 7.6, combine it with the motion on 7.8 and, and direct staff to move forward with both of them simultaneously. It would be a administration's belief uh, that once we got to the end of a draft MOU process that council would need uh, to consider that effectively the alternates that are envisioned in 7.6. Uh, Councillor Day, are you comfortable making that motion? Sure. Okay. Uh, do I have a seconder to that motion? Councillor uh, Logan, I believe. Oh, no, Councillor Kobayashi seconded that. Uh, and uh, is there any discussion? 
in regards to this? I, I'm seeing no, I'm seeing none. Um, does anyone need clarification? Yes, please. Okay, uh, count, uh, I will look to Mr. Earl. Uh, I will say it once, but Mr. Earl, perhaps you could, well, you know what, you know what, you're saying it, so I'll let you finish it. So maybe you could say it one more time for us before I call the vote. And perhaps you could, could, you could and I apologize, but if you could phrase it in a way that it would be as a motion for us, so that uh, it might be a little easier for us to understand. Thank you, Your Worship. That the deferral on item 7.6 be lifted and that staff provide a brief report to council regarding the potential uses of land parcel referred to as plan EPP 70595 Ocean Boulevard and that the recommendation as it sits in 7.8 uh, be approved. Okay, thank you. That is what is on the table. Uh, so moved. I will look to the discussion. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. So I do have a, well, I do have a mover and seconder. I, it was Councillor Dave moved it. Councillor Kobayashi seconded it. Uh, I was just clarifying the motion one final time so that before I called the vote, but I will look to discussion on this. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, I will call the question. Uh, those in opposition. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm going to, excuse me one more time. I'm going to lower people's hands one last time. My apologies. So, Nobody has discussion. I want to be clear before I call the vote. And then I think people were just keen to vote. Oh, I do have a discussion item. Uh, Councillor Parkinson. Apologies. Wishes to speak as well. Apologies, but um, I'm wondering whether staff have the ability to really determine the, uh, the economics and, and feasibility of these proposals that may come forward in a few months or six months or a year or something. Um, obviously the Arts Centre project is an incredibly complex project. Um, comparing that to some sort of, and maybe it could be uh, you know, a high rise or a school or something else, whatever other options may be for that site there's, to my way of thinking, there's an enormous, enormous level of detail to really understand the complexities of, of, of what may happen there. I mean, that's typically why, why private sector people do this, because they've got a bank of consultants and, and risk money that they're prepared to take. I, I just, I just am uneasy that the work that comes back if we try to do it all in-house will not be sufficient to make an intelligent decision. Uh, Mr. Earl, would you like to comment? Thank you, Your Worship. Staff would intend to take a high level land use economics approach to envisioning the highest and best use of that site. We would not create pro formas for the development, but we would rather look at the site and work with a land economics specialist to understand what could be developed and what would be the tax revenue and impact on the community. Administration is of the belief set that there are a few catalytic sites uh, in this community that could substantially change the nature of uh, our community. And there are very few of those that are in municipal hands, this being one of them. And so uh, staff are, are very much interested in helping council uh, make the best possible uses on this site and we would endeavor to bring the correct information forward to help you advance that thinking. Anything else, Councilor Perkinson? No. Uh, Councilor Jensen? Uh, thank you. I think I have some clarity now uh, from uh, the CAO. Enough to proceed, thank you. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody else's hands, so I am gonna call the question. Uh, those in opposition? Nobody opposes. Uh, if we could please bring back Councillor Baxter and then we will start 7.10. Um, 7.10 is a corporate communication officer, uh, Sandra Russell, regarding the Ocean Boulevard community conversation. Uh, before I look for a motion, I will um, look to um, 
staff for uh, any comments. Thank you, Your Worship. I do have a brief presentation if you would like me to go through it, uh, if you'd rather just get along with no, you. I, yeah, I think, I think council, well, I'm seeing some heads yes, some heads no. <laughs> uh, well, you, uh, you know what, let's do this first, uh, uh, Ms. Russell. Let's, um, I have a recommendation. Uh, so do I have a mover and seconder for the recommendation? Uh, moved by Councillor Logan. Is there a seconder to the recommendation that's before us? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I hit the button before. Uh, I'm going to assume it was Councillor Baxter. Was it Councillor Baxter who seconded it? Thank you. All right, so we have a mover and seconder um, on the, the recommendation. Uh, staff, or excuse me, um, Council, uh, discussion? I'm just going to clear everybody just for a moment. Um, okay, you go ahead and put your hands up now for discussion. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, uh, this was a, a great report, Sandra. Well done. Uh, very, very clear. I, I like how you uh, sliced and diced this. I guess my uh, I have two questions. My first question is uh, is I, I'm not too sure what this what we're the hundred thousand dollars talking about what what it's going to be used for. It's not really clear in my head. So that's question number one. Mm -hmm. And the second question that uh, I think is uh, very important to me uh, personally, uh, this survey, we, we went out to all our citizens, well, to the citizens of COVID. And in fact, we got some outside uh, people that, that uh, obviously participated in it. Uh, but my concern is the, the business community itself. They were never, ever specifically targeted because I would love I'd love to hear their feedback. And, and the questions have to be oriented a little bit different for them because I do think, uh, you know, potential closure or leaving it open will have an impact on businesses. And I, I think of the ones that are, are around the lagoon area. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, for example, I quite often will go down to the beach and I'll end up going into, you know, by the rec center there and going to restaurants there. But would I do it if I had to drive all the way back? So we never ever did target the business sector and get their feedback. So that's just a comment. So if you can answer the first question, that would be great. Thank you. Sure, thank you, Councillor Kobayashi. So the 100K, uh, $100,000 comes from the strategic plan where there's an item for waterfront public realm improvements. And so the budget allocation in the five-year financial plan to that project is $100,000 for 2021. Um, so that would be to engage a landscape architect um, to come up with design concepts for public realm improvements. One of those being potentially a 4.4 4 kilometer um, multi-use trail running from the lagoon all the way to the Royal Beach. So that would be about developing those concepts. And then to your second point about businesses, you're right, we didn't directly ask businesses to identify themselves and nor did we directly engage businesses. But I think that um, we reached almost 1800 Colwood residents and I would have to think that business owners were in some way represented in there. But for sure, going forward, if we were to um, expand our engagement on this, that would be a subset we should be looking at. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you, uh, Councillor Parkinson. Uh, thank you. And, and yes, Sandra, excellent report and, and, and excellent work. And uh, well, what, uh, I guess we're sort of on the horns of a dilemma here where this road, we have some very, very strong opinions on, uh, on both sides. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of opening it up uh, right away, as, as, is the, as is the consideration. I think we could take a couple of months and, and uh, explore, uh, explore what we're doing and do a little bit more, but uh, we'll, we'll we can have that discussion. My concern about what's on the table here with the uh, moving forward, the uh, landscape architecture strategic plan is that whatever we do down there, we shouldn't do anything down there until we have a frank discussion with the Canadian Wildlife Service and with the First Nations. Um, no, sense, no sense making plans what we'd like to do and what would be nice if we don't really understand those foundational pieces. So rather than jump into uh, retaining a consultant and uh, and uh, hiring, spending money like that. I, I think we should try to uh, perhaps even have them come to a staff, come to a meeting or have a, 
have a get together in some way so that we can uh, have a real good discussion with, with both First Nations and Canadian Wildlife Services on future uses down there. And with that, that may well form a great uh, foundation to go out and do some fantastic planning. And, and hopefully we can uh, turn that into the park we'd all like it to be. But that's just my thoughts on the motion in front of us. Thank you, uh, Councillor Baxter. Yeah, those are not just your thoughts, Stuart. I, I agree with uh, what you say. So I'd, I'd like to ask staff if they will be requiring the landscape architect to um, consult with um, an engineer um, who is uh, familiar in coastal engineering so that they can take into account um, the stresses uh, and the direct attack that might occur uh, at certain points of the year um, on whatever they propose. I don't see the sense in having anything designed that's not going to survive um, uh, uh, you know, one of the winters we can get down there. I'm um, Mr. Earl and then uh, Mr. Borhill. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. As Council is aware, this was a project uh, destined for uh, 2021. And uh, because of uh, how the year has unfolded and the nature of this survey, staff are asking to advance it uh, into this calendar year. The first part of uh, moving forward, should Council endorse this uh, resolution, would be to um, set the scope for what this might look like uh, in advance of going to market for an assistance. And that scope would include uh, First Nation consideration, uh, uh, protected area consideration, um, and engineering considerations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Borhill, did you have any other comment? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. No, th that uh, covered what I was going to add. And I, and I just wanted to um, mention that part of the due diligence in terms of that uh, budget uh, number was partly based on conversations with the consulting community and um, th their raising of um, complexities such as the coastal uh, geomorpholo geomorphological processes that would have to be studied. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Baxter, did you have anything else? Yeah, um, I just want to um, suggest that I, I, I could raise an amendment, but I think it's probably better if uh, I do a separate motion after we've dealt with this. So I'm just not sure how I'm going to get recognized once we've dealt with this. To raise I, will, uh, I, I, I promise you I will come back to you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Logan is next. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I uh, will be supporting this 100% and uh, I'm glad it's being moved up. Uh, simply because, you know, quite frankly, we're the victims of our, our own success down there with the, um, the attention that, uh, that we've drawn and focused on the uh, lagoon. So we need to accommodate and uh, add some additional infrastructure to, to satisfy uh, what uh, all the goings on down there. Uh, I, I was gonna raise the same point that Councillor Parkinson did about um, uh, not opening up uh, the lagoon. And, and I see July 3rd is the target date. Um, uh, I, I won't get into the discussion now as to why I, I don't think we should, but, uh, but I, I think we should have a discussion tonight, or at least a motion on the, on the table to, uh, to um, keep it as is um, until we, we figure something else out. Uh, my, my fear is if we, we've got it closed, we open it up again, we close it again, we open it up, we, we just need to make a decision. Um, and it's, uh, you know, to, uh, to avoid some of the, uh, you know, the, the to and fro, the tug of war that, uh, that has occurred every time we take action down there. So I, I think, uh, I think we do need to, to put off the reopening. La, this past weekend was a prime example and it was animated. People loved it down there. Uh, it, uh, it was safe. I'm getting into the reasons why I don't think we should open it. But, uh, but anyways, perhaps uh, maybe that's what Councillor Baxter was uh, thinking about. Um, uh, look, uh, I, will, I will come back to you, Logan, you. if Mr. Baxter is not, if the motion does not meet your needs. Uh, Councillor Jensen. A few things come to mind. Uh, um, 
maybe staff can provide some clarity, but my understanding in closing a public right away like that, uh, with some kind of permanency uh, does require a significant uh, process would be one of my concerns. Uh, and further, I mean, uh, where does the uh, transportation committee fit in with this and where does the uh, coastal uh, waterfront committee? Um, seems like we're chewing on a lot of this stuff, but uh, we've struck a panel of experts apparently for this uh, waterfront uh, stuff. It strikes me that it's the waterfront. Um, so I'd love a little bit of feedback on some of that. Okay, I will look to staff if anyone wishes to onto uh, Councillor Jensen's question. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Hi Ian Burhill here. So the Waterfront Coastal Process Committee is currently in its future casting stage where it's considering different issues that are um, at play at the waterfront. Uh, one of them will be the future programming of the space and considerations regarding sea level rise and erosion. Uh, so what the motion tonight would create an additional um, component to the considerations of what the future uses could be and how the city could get the most opportunity uh, and benefit out of the space. So I don't necessarily see this uh, conflicting with the work that the committee is doing uh, in terms of them feeding uh, recommendations about those issues to council. Uh, I have Mr. Earl and Mr. Molnar. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Should this uh, resolution pass this evening, it would be administration's recommendation uh, that this be referred back to both of those committees for their input um, on a permanent or temporal closure from a um, transportation perspective and any waterfront uh, coastal processes um, input. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Molnar, do you have any anything else? I saw you took your hand down, but I'm still calling on you. I did only so far as the Transportation Committee has, has had a brief report on what the impact of moving those cars to a different route of access is, but that's as far as they've considered to so support uh, Mr. Earl's comments that he's provided to Council tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Jensen, anything else before I go? No, I, I think a lot of it's been covered. Uh, I did. I'm not sure if anybody raised, uh, I mean, are we speaking to the federal government here as they have an interest as far as the, uh, the bird sanctuary? Uh, I mean, I'm sure we can anticipate what the result is, but I'd love to see uh, something from them signing off on, on, on our thinking. Um, yeah, that's about it, thanks. Hey, thank you. Uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Um... I think that it's, uh, it, and, and Councillor Parkinson did mention it, that uh, we really need to uh, consider Indigenous consultation. And I say that because I've been involved with the Esquimalt Lagoon Stewardship Initiative for many years there. And uh, uh, when I was visiting the lagoon with, um, uh, the CRD representative from the Esquimalt Lagoon Stewardship Initiative. Uh, the, the big um, thing that, that was continuing to happen was a real um, difficulty with, with getting uh, and keeping respect for our Indigenous partners down there. We are in the unceded traditional territories of the Esquimalt, Songhees, and Sky New First Nations. And all three of those nations um, uh, have traditionally used Esquimalt Lagoon. And when I was down there discussing it, um, happened to see walking by um, the uh, chief of the Songhees Nation at the time. Um, so it is a very important um, partnership that we really need to protect. Um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, I, I understand the desire of staff to move forward with improving and making this area better, uh, but um, there's a lot of risks 
in getting ahead of ourselves in that. Uh, there was a lot of uh, issues um, that uh, lasted for decades as a result of um, uh, Indigenous leaders feeling that they weren't uh, getting the respect that they deserved there. Um, so I, I think that that is um, so important uh, to what we do moving this forward. Uh, that uh, I'm a little concerned with rushing ahead to get a landscape consultant and, and just rolling with this when uh, I don't feel like a lot of the parts are well understood or particularly captured. Uh, I know that there were paper surveys that were, were distributed. I think the number was 67. Uh, but I also do know that people contacted me who don't uh, participate electronically, and I'm not sure that every person who would have liked to have had input actually did have input. Uh, we, not, not because anyone did anything wrong, but just because it's COVID and City Hall's shut down, there's a lack of opportunity to, to really fully engage uh, in some of those uh, less well-traveled areas. So um, I think that it is uh, really critical that uh, we um, get Indigenous input uh, before we make our plan, not after we've made our plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm not seeing any other hands, so I am going to call the question on the recommendation that uh, is before us, and then I, afterwards I will come back to uh, Councillor Baxter. Uh, those in opposition. Uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, I'm just going to stop just for a moment. Uh, Councillor Kobayashi has sent me a note that he's having a hard time hearing. Are you good now, Councillor Kobayashi? Here now? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go back then. Sorry, I'm going I'm to clear it one more time. Uh, please raise your hands if you are in opposition to the motion. Councillor Day is opposed. Uh, so that motion passes. So I will go to Councillor Baxter. Did you want to make a secondary motion, Councillor Baxter? Uh, yes, I would. Um, and I, I, there've been a couple of speakers, I think, in favor of uh, keeping it closed as it is currently. Um, but I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna say that I, I, I'm not really opposed to that, but I look at the um, results for Colwood residents and I see that, um, oh, hang on a second, I'm about to lose power, okay. Hopefully that works now. Um, I see that uh, there's 55% in favor of having it open at all times. And given that the survey was not a random sample, I think we can call that 50-50 because we can't rely that it's exactly 55% or any other particular number. So we'll call it a 50-50 vote. So um, I'm actually gonna propose that uh, subject to staff working out how we can do this, that uh, it'd be open um, for the Monday morning rush through to the Friday morning rush, and that it'd be closed uh, after the Friday morning rush through till Sunday night, and, and closed with, a, with a, a piece in the middle closed, uh, which would require setting up uh, two gates in addition to the gates we have right now so that there's plenty of parking, but there's a piece in the middle where people can just wander at leisure and so can wildlife. Okay, uh, before I look for a seconder, I see Mr. Moore has his hand up. So, uh, Brent? So with the, thank you very much, and through the chair, with the suggestion of the gates, one of the things that this closure has allowed us to do is sample the appropriate locations for the gates and for the beach food Friday that we just experienced. Public works work actively to say, you know, what is the area? It was my intention in 2021 to bring forward 
the purchase of two additional gates to meet that intent, Councillor Baxter. Um, I hadn't proposed to bring that item, budget item forward, but Councillor can certainly, Council can certainly recommend that we do bring it forward into this year so we could have that interim closure down. And then in regards to meeting the other requests, certainly be willing to talk to Public Works about the staff time that be necessary um, and, if, and if we need to bring that item back to Council. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to clear Councillor Parkinson and Logan's hands because I need a seconder first uh, to Councillor uh, Baxter's motion. Um, do I have a seconder to Councillor Baxter's motion? Uh, Councillor Day has seconded that motion. Um, so we do have the motion um, on the table. So discussion on this motion. Councillor Day, then Jensen, then Parkinson. Thank you. Um I'm, I'm just going to uh, say that um, there's there's a whole host of issues. I mean, we could spend an entire meeting talking about Esquimalt Lacoon um, because there, there's lots of things that happen down there. Uh, um, not all of them good. Uh, some of them are wonderful and we love to think about them and talk about them. Um, I've had some very disturbing stories of things that have happened down at a summit lagoon and i think that that uh i don't wish to bring the the conversation down per se but i think that that does need to be considered in our planning for the area uh and um uh, so i'm i'm just uh concerned that we're seeming to rush forward without having all of the information in front of us. Um, so um, I, I'm supportive of, of having options. Uh, and I think that uh, the idea of another set of gates is uh, important. Uh, certainly in the feedback that we've received is included um, letters from uh, the Intermunicipal Advisory Committee on Disability Issues with significant concerns for being able to access um, the area and, and being able to have amenities there that support people with disabilities. So um, I'll leave it at that. I just think that we, we really need to have all aspects um, considered before we make a decision. Councillor Jensen. Thank you, Worship. I am incapable of supporting this motion. There's nowhere near enough information for me to uh, make a competent decision here, nor have we had really any hearings. We've done a, a survey, which is a good beginning, but we are miles away from uh, making some serious changes down at the lagoon. Uh, and um, I mean, I looked at the survey too, and it's not clear to me uh, you know, what direction we should take. So I have a lot of reflection to do for my own personal thoughts and uh, I'm nowhere near ready to take a decision that might impact uh, uh, that, that roadway, park, uh, what have you. Um, so again, I think this is a good beginning step. Uh, I, would, I think people are waiting it to be opened up. Um, I don't see any reason why we should hesitate with that because we are months and months and months away from a decision for some permanency down there. And uh, so, I mean, if we pass a motion to keep it closed to a certain date, I strongly suspect we'll be passing further motions to keep it closed to another date and another date. So uh, I say we open it up in the meantime and then have a deep discussion. We've heard about who we want to hear from in the near future. Then I want to hear personally, uh, I, I suspect there'd be public hearing process. We would hear uh, from groups like IACTI. So those are my thoughts. Thank you, uh, Councillor Parkinson. So it's always interesting to listen to Dean. I, I think his, his political instincts are far more honed than mine are. So uh, probably be wise to listen to him, but, but I'm just not there. Michael, I have to call you out. I think uh, on these statistics, you know, open, open to through traffic at all times, 61%, open to through traffic from Colwood residents, 55%. Um, 
you know, open to through traffic at all times, 41% from Lagoon residents versus 36% closing it. And we had 4,000 results. I mean, I think these statistics are pretty accurate. We have to accept them, the, which puts me in a bind because accepting these statistics probably should go with Dean and just open the road and let it go. I, I, I'm not at all convinced that's the right thing to do for the long term for the city. So um, I, I struggle very much with this decision. I personally would like to see us uh, continue to leave it this way for the summer. I think we can we can be confident that the uh, you know it's not needed as a traffic artery with the uh, drop in traffic due to people working from home and COVID and summer schedules and what have you. So. We know as a computer commuter route, it, it may be nice to have, but it's certainly not needed at this point in time. So rather than open it on July 3rd, I would like to see us just leave it for the summer, see if, there, see if there's a sense from the community whether things have changed or not. Uh, and then really, you know, at the end of the day, we're all gonna have to look at this and say, the public clearly wants it open. What do we decide as our role here as, as politicians, you know, do what we feel is right or do what the public wants? If they're if they're in conflict, which they certainly are for me, maybe not for everybody else. So, thank you, uh, Councillor Logan. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'm, uh, I, you know, I, I'm thinking this along the same lines as uh, Councillor Parkinson. Um, uh, I, I've had to deal with this uh, on, on a couple of different occasions, and this time around, I see the narrative changing from it being a considered a transportation route to, to be more as a destination because we've made it a destination. And, and I, you know, I, I think to keep it open for transportation, it's we're really catering to, I think the stat was 14% four, of the residents then indicated that uh, they use it as a transportation route. 86% don't. That tells me something. And, um, you know, what I experienced last weekend actually with Councillor Jansen is uh, um, it was incredibly animated. People were safe. And uh, in, in the section that was, was, uh, was blocked off. And so, you know, I think we've learned a lot from this COVID thing and we've, we've done some testing. We, we know we can't close it off completely because it affects uh, surrounding neighborhoods. And we know that people uh, that have uh, mobility issues uh, rely on being able to drive there and, 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 uh, and uh, all sorts of groups. And I, I think in the summer, what this motion tells me in the summer is by opening up for commuter traffic during, uh, during um, Monday to Friday is we're going to start restricting access to people who now don't feel safe because of the traffic during one of the busiest periods of the year in the lagoon. And, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I, I think it's a step backwards, uh, frankly. And, and I, I enjoyed myself uh, last weekend and, and you could just tell the excitement and that's where the community wants to go to. So, you know, I think this is lockstep and barrel with, with, um, the landscape architect coming back and making suggestions on uh, how do we make it more accessible for people of all abilities while respecting um, uh, First Nations and, and uh, the bird sanctuary and stuff. But, you know, I, I think we, I, I think if we open it up, we're taking a step backwards and we're taking away the, the, the uh, joy of the lagoon. It's a, it's, it's a park now. So I'm, I'm conflicted. I would like us to wait uh, frankly, to open it up until uh, we have had conversations with um, um, uh, the, the Wildlife Service and First Nations and to kind of plot some direction uh, through the landscape architect. So yeah, I, I appreciate the attempt, uh, Councillor Baxter, but I, I'm just not quite there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Baxter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, point out there have been two councillors who said that they don't think they have enough information to take a decision, but we are going to make a decision tonight. If we do nothing, that is a decision to open it totally, because that's the declared position right now. Um, obviously, we, if we move any motion to amend that, that's also a decision. But I, I just want to be clear 
everybody here tonight is going to be part of a decision because we've brought it, we've started talking about it and whatever happens next is our decision whether we made a motion about it or not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kobe. Uh, thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is probably the most critical part of the discussion. And I lost all audio for the last 20 minutes. I had to log off and log back on. So I don't even know what the motion is. I got a, I got a feeling I do. Uh, and uh, I, I heard, uh, I did hear when Councillor Jensen spoke. And I will have to agree with Councillor Jensen because this is, uh, this is freaking crazy if we're going to make a decision on this tonight. I, I think you're absolutely nuts. We do not have all the data in front of us. Come on, let's be realistic. You know, if you go according to this survey right now, the majority of the people say you, sh you should open it. I mean, that's the majority, folks. And so, but I, I'm not. I'm not here to make that to make that judgment. It just goes back to the question I had with Sandra earlier. Have we consulted with our business community first of all? Because you know, to me. A place like Royal Bay Bakery, for example, would be affected if we were to close that road down. Surely, come on, think about this right now. A lot of people will go through there. I know people from town that know of that bakery. They drive through, they stop at the bakery, go home with something. And you close that, you think they're going to drive all the way around and to go to Royal Bay Bakery? So, you know, and there's other businesses along the strip, what I call the strip. They're affected. So, uh, you know, if, if there's, the motion is that we, we make the decision to close this tonight, I think we're nuts to be doing this. Uh, yeah, the mo the mo Sorry to interrupt, Councillor yeah. Kobayashi. The motion right now is for the road to be open Monday through Friday, and okay. then Friday after rush hour uh, to close it over the weekend. Okay. Uh, so it, it's meant to right. be closed. Not sure if we define the time, but I'll, I'll just make it up. We'll say noon on Friday until Sunday evening is sort of the, the spirit of the motion of what Councillor Baxter was, was moving. But I, so. I still think the consultation right now with the First Nations, I think the consultation with, with businesses, I think all that's required before we even start debating this right now. I, I don't think we have all our facts in front of us right now. Uh, and, and that's how I feel. And I, I'm gonna vote again. We have to put it back to the way it was, I think for now. But let's, let's, it's, on, it's on the table now. It's definitely on the table. Let's have the debate. But let's get the factual information in front of us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kobayashi. Uh, I will put my two bits in. Uh, I, I think long-term, we do need to look at shutting the road down. Uh, but uh, the road was shut down uh, due to COVID. Um, and I think uh, to be sincere to our community, I think it's our responsibility to reopen the road. And then to begin to have this discussion, you know, down the road, if if that's the case. So I will not be supporting supporting the motion, Councillor Day. You, your hand is up, uh, but uh, unless you have, uh, I, I have to go to council and ask for a vote to allow you to speak a second time. Um, is there is it an important comment that you'd like to make in regards to this? I think it is important. Then, then uh, I will, and it's short. Okay, then I will, I will ask Council. Council, uh, Councillor Day is wishing to speak a second time. I'm going to clear everybody's hands. Uh, those, those in opposition, Councillor Day speaking a second time. <laughs> Councillor Jensen opposes, which he opposes everybody speaking a second time. So, uh, Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, I just want to point out that uh, less than half of the respondents to the survey are from Colwood. And uh, I, I would just wanted to speak in support of Councillor Kobayashi's concern that we're making a decision uh, without all the information. That's certainly how I feel. Um, there's been, you know, years uh, of volunteer participation uh, for Esquimalt Lagoon and uh, considerable effort by members of the community. And I, I know it's not gonna be a cut and dried answer ever, uh, but let's at least try to get all the parts on the table and make sure that the people that we count are the people who have to pay for 
and live with the results. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I will call the vote then. Uh, this is in, I will uh, paraphrase Councillor uh, Baxter's motion, but it was it, the motion is to keep the road open Monday through Friday and then to close it after rush hour on Friday until Sunday. That is the motion. Those in opposition? Uh, Councillor Kobayashi, Councillor Logan, Councillor Jensen, Councillor Day, Councillor Parkinson, Mayor Martin, opposed. Uh, that motion fails. Uh, Councillor Logan, I said I would give you an opportunity. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. I would move that we uh, leave the the, uh, the road closed as it currently is until uh, September and then uh, revisit at that time. And if I can motivate. Certainly, uh, I'll look for a seconder first. Uh, is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Parkinson has seconded it. Uh, I will clear hands. If you wish to speak to the motion, please put your hands up now, Councillor Logan. Thank you, Worship. Uh, perhaps if we have a couple of months of experience, we'll be able to uh, a take some time and consult with our uh, First Nations partners and uh, folks from the Canadian Wildlife Service. But also, uh, maybe we can come up with some strategies that uh, that uh, take into account our local business community, uh, as Councillor Kobayashi has uh, has mentioned, um, but uh, also recognize that our commuter traffic um, at this point is uh, uh, it, 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 it's not at a point where it's going to have an effect on the chosen road and, and island highway because we're we're in the summer and uh, and it'll recognize that. Um, uh, the uh, the increased crowds and and uh, the accessibility to the lagoon if we just keep it closed as is now. Oh, we didn't articulate that. But. Thank you. Uh, I will go to it's Councillor Baxter then Jensen. I'm just taking advantage of the fact this is a separate motion. And I can speak again to say that you're all making a decision. Uh, if anybody thinks they're not making a decision by killing this motion. I'd like to hear an explanation of how that's not a decision. Well, thank you. I, thank you. Uh, I'm not going to get into semantics with you today. <laughs> I think you are correct, Councillor Baxter. We are making decisions. Absolutely. I don't think there's anybody who could argue that. Uh, Councillor Jensen. Specifically, though, I'm taking a decision to not take a decision to close the road because I'm lacking information. So, um, you know, just, just as a further point, uh, it sounds great to keep it closed for the summer. Um, I too enjoyed the, the weekend down there and boy, uh, I, would, I would be in favor of uh, event closures like we do or the occasional weekends. Uh, but just as a point, um, we're, we're down for the summer pretty quick. So I, I think if anyone thinks that a whole bunch of work is gonna be done on this file by staff and they're gonna be reporting out to us and we're gonna be discussing it between now and September, it's nonsense. So we'll just be basically uh, back in order in September if we close it till September and then we're coming back and then we begin a discuss discussion and then it's Christmas before it gets on an agenda. So we might as well keep it close to Christmas. I'm being glib, sorry. All right, thank you. I'm not seeing any other hands, so I am going to call the question. Uh, this is to Councillor uh, Logan. Sorry, September is it September first? What, what was the uh, what was your date? Let's say the end of September. Okay, uh, it's to the end of September. Uh, um, so I will call the question. Uh, those in the opposition, please raise your hand. Councillor Kobayashi, Councillor Jensen, and Mayor Martin oppose, um, which means the motion passes. Uh, moving on to bylaws. Uh, and sorry, I'm going to stop just for a moment um, and look to our corporate officer. Sorry, it was it 8.6 that I'm... Uh, 
I'm taking off. I know we amended the agenda at the beginning, but I didn't make a note. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Martin. 8.7 and 8.8, .8, we're simply removing the motion to adopt. We'll still proceed with with the first, second, and third readings on those two. Okay, so just, uh, just 7 and 8.8, 8. okay, thank you. Um, thank you. So we are on 8.1, bylaw number 1735, Urban Forest Bylaw Amendment, uh, first, second, and third reading. We have a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Baxter, seconded by Councillor Day. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in opposition? The motion passes. 8.2, bylaw number 1812, Callwood Business License uh, Bylaw. This is for adoption. May I have a mover and seconder, please? Uh, moved by Councillor Day, seconded by Councillor Logan. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, those in opposition, please raise your hand. Uh, the motion passes. Uh, 8.3, bylaw number 1813. This is the inter-community business license. This is for adoption. We have a mover and seconder. Count, uh, moved by Councillor Baxter. I need a seconder, please. Uh, seconded by Councillor Jensen. Uh, discussion? Uh, Councillor Day? Sorry, no, I was just trying oh, to second. Thank you. Uh, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, or excuse me, uh, those in opposition, please raise your hand. Uh, nobody opposes. Moving on to 8.4, bylaw number 1814, uh, development fees and charges. Uh, this is for adoption. We have a uh, move by Councillor Baxter, second by Councillor Kobayashi. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in opposition? Nobody opposes, uh, motion carries. 8.5, bylaw number 1816, land use amendment. This is cannabis uh, retail, third reading. This is third reading only. Uh, moved by Councillor Baxter, seconded by Councillor Day. Um, discussion on third reading? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in opposition, please raise your hand. Uh, no one, great, thank you. Uh, 8.6, bylaw number 1826. This is a council committee uh, procedure amendment bylaw uh, for adoption. Moved by Councillor Baxter, seconded by Councillor Kobayashi. Um, discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in opposition, nobody opposes. Moving Sorry, on to- I was trying Sorry. to get in for discussion and somehow it didn't work. That's all right. That we will come back to it, Councillor Day. So 8.6, we are in discussion. This is uh, regarding Council Committee procedural bylaw uh, bylaws. Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, it just, uh, I was following up on our procedure bylaw with staff in regards to posting of in camera agendas. And uh, I see that it does not indicate in our procedure bylaw that in-camera uh, meetings are advertised on our website. And I would like uh, to see that uh, notice is posted on our website as well as on the doors at City Hall, especially given how it's been with COVID that uh, uh, it's unlikely that community members would know that we would be having a meeting, even though they can't attend it, they do need to know that we are meeting. Uh, okay, I will look to staff. Um, if if Councillor Day was to make that, does that need to go back to first, second, and third reading? Uh, thank you, Mayor Martin. Uh, In-camera meetings are considered a closed portion of either a regular meeting or a special meeting. So the notice provisions related to regular meetings of council and special meetings of council also apply to in-camera. Now our bylaw requires that the notice be published on the bulletin board at uh, City Hall, and it also allows for it to be on the website or the window, but the main posting place is stated as the bulletin board. This notice was on the bulletin board and was on the door at City Hall. Um, and certainly we can put it on the website as well. And I do believe it was uploaded today, but the bylaw as it exists provides for that same notice provision as any other council meeting. Right, so I, so Councillor, uh, excuse me, uh, Ms. Williams, I guess the question is, is as Councillor Day is, is saying, 
in bylaw number 1826, it does not say that we need to post it on the website uh, if we are doing an in-camera meeting. And she is saying that she would like uh, for the bylaw to read that, that it would an in-camera meeting would be posted on the website. If we were to amend bylaw number 1826, so that included uh, that we needed to post it on the website, how would we do that? And uh, is that, and that's that, hence the reason I asked the question, do we need to go back to first, second, third reading, or do we need to go back to a second reading and, and do a second reading amended with that, with that change if, if this council chose to do that direction? Uh, yes, so, so my apologies if I wasn't more clear. Uh, what I was trying to articulate is that the bylaw as it exists right now, read in conjunction with the community charter, requires in-camera agendas to be posted with the same notice requirements as any regular or special council meeting. So the bylaw is currently meeting the needs of uh, Councillor Day's request. It's just not spelled out there as an in-camera meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Day? Thank you. So when I chatted earlier today, it still was not posted on the website. So I, I guess I, well, I don't so know what to do. <laughs> Well, okay. Day, I, it is it is up there it was put up there this afternoon okay so i'm actually i'm going to stop both of you because i guess what i'm i'm not thinking about tomorrow's in-camera meeting i'm talking about the general process of it so i'm not really interested in if it was posted or not posted on today i'm more interested in in how do we do this moving forward and i what i'm hearing what i've thought i think i've heard from staff is that moving forward our in-camera postings will mirror what our council requirements are. Am I that correct? That is correct. Okay. So, um, Councillor Day, does that offer any uh, a comfort Thank to you? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, Councillor Baxter, you had your hand up. Uh, did you wish to discuss uh, uh, bylaw number 1826? No? Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, I will call the question. Those in opposition? Uh, that carries. There's nobody in opposition. Uh, bylaw number 1827, Main Sewer LAS uh, 3366 Wishard Road, first, second, and third reading only. We have a mover and seconder. Thank you. I have Councillor Baxter and Councillor Logan has seconded it. Um, discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call the question. Uh, those in opposition? Uh, nobody opposes. Uh, moving on to 8.8, .8, bylaw number 1828. Uh, this is the sewer LAS enlargement 3366 uh, Wishard Road. This is only first, second, and third readings. Um, moved by Councillor Jensen, seconded by Councillor Baxter. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Any in opposition? Seeing none, um, that motion passes. Uh, there is no in camera, however, um, before we end tonight um, and we adjourn, uh, we do have an in-camera meeting tomorrow evening at 5.30. Uh, my intention was for us to attempt to do that meeting in person. Could uh, councillors please raise their hand? I won't, I won't uh, announce it um, outwardly because the general public's listening, but if you could just raise your hand if you were planning on, on uh, going through the conference call and not actually attending in council. Uh, tomorrow evening. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I will look for an adjourn uh, motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Logan. Uh, all those in uh, any in opposition? Uh, no one in opposition. Uh, the motion passes. We will see everybody tomorrow night at five thirty. Thanks. Good night, everybody.